Oogie Boogie, guess who's back? Okay. Killer Fruit. Oh, what the hell is going on with my hair? What the fuck is this? A fucking pretty unicorn. <laughs> fucking. Uh, bro, what is up with my hair? I've got like a little dick. New game. Okay, audio is not coming through my headset. Audio is not coming through the headset. But here we go. Subtitles on? Yeah, there we go. I think we're good. I think we're good in the hood. There we go. Oh my god. Object interaction. Jump in the bin, hide in the bin. Do something. Uh. Okay. Yo, is Damos after me? Turn them lights on. Yo, don't tell me Damo from Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege is then after me. Ah, oh, yeah, I'm cooked. This is actually. Hey, I've got a. F I've got a fucking mug. Oh, I can throw it so far. I've got a mug and I'm not scared. I'm not. A, I'm not. I'm not scared to use it. Close that door. No. Close. No. There we go. It's closed. No, no, nah, get out of there. Oh, yeah, GG, you're cooked. No, nah, you're cooked, my guy. You're cooked. The moment the lights turn back on, you're getting stabbed. Yeah, GG's. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah, there's no coming back from that. He's cooked. Where's my coffee? Someone yelling, or yeah, he just oh, died in the no. fucking basement. How? Forrest, is this a joke? No, I, I almost swore I heard something. Oh, and here I was thinking you'd finally started to ease up. You probably just heard some cats outside. Cats? You know, four legs, whiskers, tails, not dogs. <laughs> you shut up, Peggy. But I mean, does Gallows Creek have a straight cat problem or something? <laughs> not since the rats moved in. Anyway, you ready to do the pre-flight checks? Seriously. Do we have to do these checks every time? And do you have to call them that? Reggie pays us to check the equipment for each show, and he pays us to call it a pre-flight check. But if you're sure you don't want to... Oh, let's do the checks. Um, just give me a second. Uh, I've got a fucking thing in my hand. I d there you go, you pop it there. Uh, no, let's do the checks. No, Can we, no do the checks. All right, fine. Let's get through this. Check, Alrighty, please! This captain speaking. Really? Come on, let's have a bit of fun with it for once. Buckle in, folks. We're about to hit some tubular rents. Shut up, Peggy! <sighs> okay. Grab a record, stick it on the player, 
and hit play. Okay. Easy. I can do that. Um, how do I... Hey, Peggy, how do I place it down? Never mind. Figured it out. Don't need your help. I don't know how this works. Uh, Forrest, you need to grab a record and stick it on the turntable. Shut the fuck up, Peggy! I did that! Great. Now turn it off. I just, I just turned it on. Better? All right, up next, phone line button. Your captain will be waiting to take your call on line one. Line one, line one, line one. What line? Oh, what, 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 I'm so confused. Um, oh. All right, Peggy, ready for you on line one. Who's Peggy? This is Captain Donald Key calling. Call me Don. You get it? Peggy. Yeah. It's a riot. Great, and button two works just the same. So, Peggy, if you don't shut the fuck up right now. You mean the producer line? Like I said, the Peggy button. Press it when you need my help during the show. Hmm. Is there a Peggy mute button? Yeah, I'd love to know that too. Yet. Now come on. The Peggy, <laughs> Peggy shut the, the fuck up, Peggy. The phone line. I labeled it for you. <laughs> Uh, press for Peggy. This is your brain, Forrest. Sorry I made you such an unfun turkey. I'm a turkey now, am I? Okay. Are we almost done? <laughs> oh, and that mug is lost forever. That's an easy I'm not getting that mug back, am I? That was my favorite mug. What? Now what? Sound blaster. Front of the desk to the right. It's the thing covered in buttons. There we go. 189 oh, point 60. This right, is 1029 hot tomato. Just the volume sliders left. That's an Australian joke. You affect pretty much everything. But let's test it with a record. Play a record and change the volume with the music slider. All right. Seems to be all working. We done? Captain? <laughs> we sure are. Coming in for landing. Local time? Uh, should not encourage you. I knew you had a fun side. It's my fun side that gets me in trouble. 16. Now, let's get the show started. After your introduction, our first segment is Guess That Screams. I... Um, that sounds that a joke. vaguely nope. productive. And don't blame me for this one. It's Reggie all the way, and he demands we do it tonight. Fucking fine. Okay, you're live in three, two. One eighty nine point sixteen. One eighty nine point sixteen. My name is Forrest, the molester. Good evening, Gallows Creek. This is your host, Forrest Nash, and you're listening to uh, Nash. The scream. Then you Before start playing some like tonight on Gallows Creek's only some late crazy night shit. talk show. I need to let you know about a special competition we have for you this evening. Guess that scream. This is actually one of the station manager's better ideas. Here's how it works. I'm gonna play you a scream, then you call and guess that ah. scream. We need you to guess why they're screaming. Ah. Did they stub their toe? Saw off a finger or Discover the corpse of a loved one. That's good. Now, ah! the we'll play that scream in just a second. Listen close. Ah! Call in to guess that scream. That go in? Peggy, what do you mean play the tape? I used to have a tape guy do that for me. You're not in Chicago anymore, Forrest. Here in Gallows Creek, you get to be your own tape guy. Come on, I gave it to you yesterday. This Forrest, you do have the tape right. You knew we were doing this tonight. Peggy, let's be real. Guess that scream is a terrible idea. No, I I don't have the tape. It may be a stupid idea, but that doesn't mean it can't At least I'll know where it is now. We're going to need a scream tonight, Forrest. And you're the one at the mic, so... I used to go out all across America, and now I'm just screaming into a mic in a backwater town. Jesus. Come on, Forrest, just do it. That's enough dead air already. Just think of a scream and let it rip. Okay. Oh, God. 
Sorry about that. Yeah. I'm back. I had to step away there for a second. Listen close, and then call in to guess that screen. The 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 folding from cliff stream. That that sounds like you're getting pegged. Call in with your guesses, and if you get it right, you could win two tickets to the amazing Maze Maze and one free fried dough. <laughs> KFAM with your guest. Now, here's some music while you get dialing. Now what? Time to go on the journey that is. Last processor with their hit song, 1980X. Thanks. I can't wait to hear what people think that was. <laughs> How the hell did I get into this mess? Well, I don't know. Oh, that... That's going to be the highlight of my week. Oh, there it is. It's right there. Oh, Forrest, there's a call coming in. Oh. Welcome to 189.16, The Stream, caller. You're talking to Forrest Nash. What's going on with you tonight? Forrest. Thank God I made Leslie. You. My name is Leslie Harper. I'm the 911 operator and police dispatcher for Gallows Creek. Um I uh slow night. Uh are you calling? Welcome to the show, Leslie. Are you calling in to guess that scream? <gasps> As a 911 operator. Fam. I bet you may have an educated guess. What? No. Look, I found a body and I need your Wait, help. what? 911 is calling me to report a body. Interesting setup. All right, I'll bite. Kobe. Punchline then. Forrest, I recognize your voice. I'm pretty sure that Kobe actually is our 911 operator. First try. I think this is real. Peggy, Kobe. I'm not gonna be happy if this is a prank. I don't do prank segments on my shows. It's Kobe. Contract. Forrest, I really don't. Think Steph and Curry. Um. Okay. Leslie. I level with you. I find this hard to believe, but I'll hear you out. Kobe, what exactly is going on? Sheriff Matthews is dead. What? Sheriff Matthews is dead? I couldn't get any response from the department. Kobe. It never happened before, so I came to the station. Oh! I found him. Oh God! Poor Sheriff Matthews. Am I meant to know him? What happened to him? Someone got him. Someone got him. And what? I really Pegged don't him? Want to say what they did, to him. did he fight back? I don't know. I think he tried. He's surrounded by bullet casings. I think he tried to shoot at whoever it was, but... Where are the officers? Is anyone else at the station? Or is anyone else at the station? Anyone who can help you? Or, or who might be responsible? No. I checked everywhere. Deputy Martinez is here. But she's knocked out, tied up, and locked in a holding cell. I called you right after I found her. God. Wait. <laughs> Please don't tell me that this hick town only has Uh, three. the sheriff just died? We have three. But Officer Gunderson is on leave in Cancun. Leslie, do you have any idea who could have done this? Not a clue. I didn't see anything on my way over. You get in Leslie, there. Fuck! need to call over to Henderson or Quiet Ridge. They need to send someone over from their department. I tried. But I can't call anything but local numbers. Something's wrong. I'll have to go there myself. Let them know what's going on and bring help back with me. But if you leave while there's a murderer on the loose, who's gonna man the emergency line? That's why I called. Forrest, I've routed all 911 calls to come in to you. Uh, you count on me. You can count on me. I'm gonna be the best emergency line operator there ever been. Thank you. Job. I'm equipped, all right. Just not in this trade. The two. It's like an interview. Shut you up. Ask questions to get information you can use. Keep people talking, you know. Guide the conversation and 
know when to jump in. You do know that I'm so good at interviews, they sent me from Chicago to... <laughs> so I've heard. But that doesn't matter. <clears throat> and besides, there Fuck. are two of you. You can talk to each other, discuss ideas, <clears throat> work together. Well, let's have some on-the-job training yeah! right now. I have an emergency. I need to get an unconscious Deputy Martinez out of that holding cell. It looks like whoever attacked mm. you the keys... I'm a dirty... Kobe! Is there any way Fuck. you can reach the keys? No. There aren't any bars to the cell, and the door itself only has a food tray slot. And that's too narrow for me to reach through. I should quit. There's gotta be another I should become a, boss, a professional NBA player. Try to break down the door, find another, uh, find another set of keys. Uh, try to break down the door. Any chance you could break down the door? It's a holding cell, Forrest. These doors aren't budging for anybody. Uh, find another set of keys. There's gotta be another set of keys somewhere in that office. Those can't be the only one. Of course. Yes, there must be another set. Where might oh. another set be? I just ox that. Uh, office. Uh, Maybe Sheriff Matthews had a set of keys on him when he, you know. I couldn't see any other layout, the dust. But I didn't really look up close. One second. Who did that? <laughs> Please don't stare at me. I... Oh, wait. That might be them. I, I, th I think I got the cell keys. Looks like Sheriff Matthews might have saved his deputy. Do the keys work? They do. Give me a minute to untie Deputy Martinez. I'll be right back. So far, so good, I suppose. How are you feeling, Forrest? Uh, to be honest, pretty good. I think we can handle this. Yeah. That seemed to go okay. Maybe Leslie was right. Maybe we can handle this 911 business. That's the spirit, Forrest. I think you're right. Though, I have to say, I... Well, I really hope this is the only call like this we get. Same. Come on, Martinez. There we go. I'm just gonna sit you in your office chair. Okay. I'm back. Deputy Martinez is still out cold. Well, no shit, I can hear you. You never muted yourself. I'm taking her in the car with me to get help in Henderson. If the killer came back now, Martinez would be a sitting duck. That's a good idea. We don't want to take any risk right now. Thank you, Forrest. You and Peggy just worked together like you did earlier. You can do this. Now I'll be back as soon as I can. Oh shit! Pe uh, I mean, Leslie! What? What do you mean it's on fire? How the hell? Did it just go up in smoke? What happened? Wait. Oh, GG, she's what? dead. No, no way. This can't. Well, Forrest, we have big trouble. What's happening? Uh, what's that noise? It sounds like whistling. Whistling? It can't be. Oh my god. I can see him, but he's dead, right? He's dead! Give me some clarification on who what we're dealing with. Who, Leslie? Who? The whistling man. The whistling. You really? You're telling me that? Yeah, who's the whistling man? Yeah, he's dead. But he's dead. He's what the hell? Oh God. Do you think? Do you think he attacked Sheriff Matthews and Deputy Martinez? He's coming this way. Uh, lock the doors. Leslie, stay inside and lock the doors. Right. Shit, we need a new plan. My car is torched. We need to think. There should be police cruisers at the sheriff's office, right? Like, you should take one of those. I... Yeah. Yeah, that could work. I'm a master at this. I've played, I've played games like this before. Uh, Um, 
Deputy Martinez surely carries a gun, right? Could you use that? Deputy Martinez's gun is missing. I guess the whistling man must have done something with it. The sheriff must have a gun, right? Can, can you see it? There was a gun next to him. Let me grab it. I... Shit. It's empty. Ah. He must have emptied it trying to defend himself. Are, are there any other weapons lying around that you could use? I didn't see anything earlier. Um, uh, let me check Deputy Martinez's belt. Take the taser. Take the taser. Taser. I mean, it's got to be the taser, right? Got it. I'm just going to grab Deputy Martinez and then. Wait. Do you hear that? No. No. I, I can't hear anything. Exactly. It's gone quiet. No more knocking. Um. Be careful. Be careful. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it. But it's an opening. And I, I like how uh, uh, there's a date, like a like a murder on the loose, and I'm just playing basketball with this table. If you can hear me, it's time to move. Oh, fuck off! Just lean on me. Yep. There you go. Are you sure about this, Leslie? No time like the present, right? Oh, I'm a master at this so, now. Here we right go. there. Again. Right. You're hooked into dispatch now. So right there. Able to right there. When I reach the car. Yes, Bitch. I Speak to you soon. Well, good luck. This is the part where the killer comes out of nowhere, isn't it? You know, I've got to say, this really wasn't what I expected when I came into work today. Yeah. Well, they always say you have to be ready for everything in live radio. Not this shit, though. I think we've got Leslie back on the line. I'm putting the call through. Hello? Forrest? Peggy? This is Leslie. Are you there? Yeah. What? Ten four. Hello, Leslie! So I, I guess you made it to the car then. We did. Deputy Martinez is in the passenger seat still out cold. I don't see the whistling man anywhere, and I don't plan to wait for him. So I'm going to get us moving. Jesus. God, oh, God. he's back. Get back. Yeah, 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 with the prank. Leslie, what's happening? The whistling. No. Get off her, you son of a bitch. Fire the taser. What was this, Peggy? Forrest, did you did, did you like? Right oh my God! I can't believe we escaped. Well done, Leslie. You saved a life. Just another day for you. Oh my God! Yeah. But let me tell you, I prefer doing it from your side of the boat. Yeah, same. Leslie, how long do you think it's gonna take to get home? Fuck being Dallas in the field. So we're looking at four to six hours. GGs. Uh, we'll do our best. We'll do our best to keep everyone safe until then. Thank you. Just do what you did just now, and Gallows Creek is going to be okay. You dirty little anyway, bitch. Fuck! Big Deputy Martinez is starting to stir. Forrest, Peggy, I've got to go. I'll be out of range soon, but I'll radio back as soon That's as I That's what I'm talking about. Take care, Leslie. Be safe out there. Good luck, Leslie. Feel better soon, Deputy Martinez. Shut up, Peggy. No one asked you. Fucking hell. Yo, how many trophies are in this game? Yo, platinum run. We'll do a platinum run tonight, yeah? 28. Folks, you heard it here. We've got a killer on the streets of Gallows Creek tonight. Please make sure to stay safe. And Leslie, we're counting on you. It is for you, Leslie. Get back to the show, meanwhile. If you have anything on your mind 
or have any information about this Whistling Man character, then give us a call. We'll talk here on 189.16, The Scream. For now, here's another hit record for you all to enjoy. This is not what I signed up for, Peggy. This is actually uh -huh. insane. Did she really say it's going to take her four hours? This guy's Potentially six. In four hours. Forrest, that's not helpful. I know, I know, I just... <sighs> Who is this Whistling Man character anyway? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Edward Marshall Mooney. Went around in a freaky mask. Let me out. So we're screwed? Because it sounds like we're screwed. Well, probably not. We just chased him up to Alice Point one night. We call it Whistling Point now. And it was... Whistling uh, Point? Where's that? I don't see it on the map. The police cornered him. Jumped Traffic him. notice. Um... So is he alive? Dead? I mean, what's the East side story? McCready Street will be closed from the 2nd to the 9th of September for maintenance. All right. Residents will be unable story. to access the connecting road between road to the road Other than we have a whistling killer on our hands tonight, I don't know. Where's... What the fuck are these things? Guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out what we're dealing with, whether we like it or not. I guess so. <sighs> at least we got the word out, I guess. What kind of listening figures do we get at this time? On a Thursday after midnight? Could be around 35? 35? It was in 3,500. Huh. I didn't realize Gallows Creek was that large. No, 35 people at best. At best? 35 at best? 35, yeah. It's a school night. And what's the population of Gallows Creek? I don't know exactly. A little over a thousand. Yeah, you guys, how are you guys how making any money off this? How before? You know. Before my career exploded and I ended up on a midnight hour talk show in the town of a thousand people? Yeah, before that. Around five for most shows on the low end? Big gas could pump that up to... 10, 15, easy. 5,000 on the low end? We can only dream of that. 5 million. Million? Yeah, sometimes that's just the way it goes. That's just how it goes. The whistling man hasn't killed me yet, I guess. Yeah, I guess we're going to learn a lot about perspective tonight, huh? Oh, we have a call coming in. Oh. Take it when you're ready. Oh, how about I don't take it? How about Hello, that, Peggy? Caller. You're live on 189.16, The Scream. Is everything, uh, all right? Okay, uh, who is this? Are you, uh, hello? Hello? Okay, what's your name and why are you calling in? Yeah, what is a prank caller? You know my name. I come back from the dead to kill again. No one save. Do you accept requests? I've got a list of names I'd love to see in the obituaries. Yeah, it's a prank caller. I've got a prank caller. I like that sound effect. I mean, me. We want cheese dusted pretzels. I mean, I want cheese dusted pretzels. I'll cut your face off. Damn kids. I'm cutting them off. Yeah, cut him off. Uh, we also want a mega cult. For anyone just tuning in, 
We do, in fact, have an actual killer out in the streets tonight. Anyway, this next one's dedicated to all of you staying inside with your doors and windows locked. Yeah! Now it's time to go with the flow. And this is their hit, crying for help. Hey, what the hell was that? Kids pretending to be a killer who right now is stalking the town? It's a thing. A thing? Oh, kids around here. They pull pranks pretending to be him. By pretending to be this whistling man character? They think it's funny, but it's not. It's not funny at all. And there's no chance that our whistling man was just a prank. That Leslie... No, that... That's real. <sighs> Christ. Let's stay positive. We still have a show to do. We already have another caller on the line. Oh my right. god, we do already? Let's do this. Hello. Hello. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. What? I, I dialed 911. Sandra, I I'm sorry, but I am the 911. Okay, right. I am the well, cops. I'm filling in for 911 tonight. I am the police. What's your name? What's your trouble? Uh, the cops aren't coming. I'm sorry, but the cops aren't coming. Leslie's on her way to Henderson for help. What? God. Listen, you've got to help me then. I drove to the edge of town for that, Apparently that's what I'm doing. I like for now. The whistling man is after me, knife in hand. Oh, God. It's actually happening. Uh. Where are you now? Where are you now? Did you escape to somewhere safe? Oh, I did, baby. I just Don't call me baby. Never call me baby. That's full out New Vegas flashback right there. Mm. Uh, can you back up? Uh, sounds like you've lost him. I think you'll be fine. Is there anywhere else you can go? Is there anywhere else you can go? Do you have any friends nearby? Oh, I'm not going back out there. I. Oh yeah, she's cooked. Nice knowing you, Sandra. Nice knowing you, Sandra. But I gotta start this engine without the keys. And you're gonna have to help me. Wait, 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 I don't. Uh, if it helps, I've got a toolkit buried beneath my spare sweat. What? I'll call you back when I find it. How the fuck? You're listening to 189.16, The Scream. Hosted by me, Forrest Nash. Your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, mechanic and savior. Sit tight while Teddy the Geller record spins, Jr. folks. This one goes out to you, Christmas Sandra, and a proud patriot. Teddy Gallows Jr. is Gallows Creek. Like his father and all his fathers before him, Teddy Gallows Jr. has worked hard to create jobs, improve infrastructure, and make Gallows Creek a good place to raise a family. Unlike current mayor, play a record, Forrest. Teddy Gallows Jr. lives in Gallows Creek. He's our neighbor, and he stands with our neighbors. Like Sheriff Matthews, who, after Fine. years of keeping the peace, Mayor Cartwright is. Doesn't the station have a show about cars? The Tamora Twins or something? Timberline Twins talk motors. Yeah. You know they're not even brothers. Really? They look the same though. I know, but they're not even related. It's weird. I asked them about it once, and they got really sweaty and defensive. Anyway, go see what you can find. The offices are out the door and down the hall. Okay. That's cool. Uh, guys, oh, guys, I'm some diet coke. And diet goat. What, coffee? Oh, it's fucking empty! Comrade. Yeah, that is disgusting. There's just flies laying around. Peggy, clean your shit up. This looks useful. Hey, yo, Peggy, I found something.
there anywhere to put these things? Are you telling me I can't put them on the fucking thing? I'm gonna hold it. Really? I feel... Okay. Why is it red outside? So many locked doors, so few keys. Okay. Uh... What exactly am I looking for? Hello? Hello? I'm gonna take this back. This seems useful. There we go. That's not. Nah, that's just, that's not. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. We do that. Um. What's down here though? So we found that tape, which is there. Um. What else do we got? I can't open any of these. Yay. Yeah, I'm keeping that. This is my fucking weapon. If anyone tries to fight me. Am I meant to bring this back? Is this what I'm looking for? I need a key to get in there. I'm not getting in there tonight. Maybe uh, you should get some keys. What, Peggy? You find anything? Yeah, I found a magazine about hot wiring cars. Well, that sounds perfect. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Why? Caller on line one. Thanks, Peggy. We're back with 189.16. The calm. How are you holding up, Sandra? Isn't that what Jack's up guy said? Nice. Um. Oh shit. Um. Uh. uh what's going and, and twist it clockwise. Put the screwdriver in the ignition and twist clockwise. Here goes, baby. I. I. Oh, screwdriver's too fat to fit. What next? Unscrew the steering column. Unscrew the steering column. All right. Jazz turn. Jazz, Jazz turn? Doing great. Do your jazz breathing. Don't panic. Do your jazz breathing. Don't panic. I'm gonna get you out of this, Sandra. We can do this. Yeah, we can do this. We can do this.
Um... What does it say here? Check the serial number, then strip and twist the following wires together. What's the serial number on the steering column? The number is five seven six eight nine four three two zero. There's a, if there is a four before three, uh, red and blue. If there's a six annual. Uh, if there is a zero at the end and a three doesn't come before a six, red and yellow. This one. Strip and twist together the red and yellow wires. All right. We take All right. Yes, okay, Jinxie. Perfect. I also see pink and purple wire. What next? Uh, now strip the purple wire. Strip the purple wire and brush against the twisted wires. Strip the purple wire and brush against the twisted wires. Okay, I'll now, give you that. I am a. Yes, dude, you, you get in for free. Fuck yeah, I do. Now where do I chuck this? Uh, here. We did it. Just keep driving. I'm glad you're safe, but lay off the jazz. Just keep driving. Just keep driving now, okay? And get home safe. Get home safe, Sandra. Will do. Sandra Bullock. Sure did. Here comes another hit track that we're ja excited to share with you. And remember, if you're also having car troubles, then tune in to Timberline Twins Talk Motors here on 189.16, Monday to Friday at 5. Shut Enjoy up, Peg! If this is my show, not yours! It's funky, it's groovy, it's stabbing the twilight by knife and easy. I still can't believe this is happening. Right? Like Gallows Creek didn't already have enough to worry about? What do you mean? Gallows Creek is a miserable place to live. Really? Miserable? It's nothing personal, Peggy, but it's not Chicago. Or, hell, it's not really anywhere. Well, I like it here. People are polite. Friendly, usually, if you get to know them. Come on, there must be something you like about this place. I guess some folks have been okay. You're not terrible, after a while. Yeah! Not terrible after a while? High praise coming from Forrest Nash. You know what I mean, Peggy. I do. It's Forrest Nash for, I think you're swell. Anyway, Oy, nothing but tonight. net. And that Leslie gets nothing but to. net. Can we at least call off that stupid guess the scream contest now? Yeah, that'd probably be a good idea. Okay. Twelve forty two. Caller on line one. Oh. Kobe. Fuck. Evening caller, this is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16 The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. Hey, Forrest, my name is Brian. Uh, uh, Brian Ponty. Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. Okay. Now, what do you want from me? Hello, Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. If it, you wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. If you're doing a self-promotion, do not do that. I'm so happy that that Deputy Martinez survived. I've seen her a lot over the years down here at Ponty's 
Thanks, Pizza. Oh, you did a really great job. And uh, as a thanks for all you did there. Come on! Fuck yeah, free pizza! Kobe! Wow, Brian. That's really good of you. You really don't have to, though. Yeah, you don't have to, though. But he is! And if you like it, well, you're in luck. Because we're always running great deals. We'll have you eating for pennies. Sounds great, bro. And let me tell you, the pizza we have is the dime. He's actually just self-promoting. That was pretty tasteless, I have to say. I'm sorry, Boris. Well, I just hope I didn't put you or anyone else of coming on down to Ponty's Pizza. We've got a great special this weekend. Our famous beer and pizza deal. Wait a minute. Come on down to Ponty's Pizza this weekend! You've just got to pay for one slice to get yourself- God damn it, you're just calling in to advertise your shop for- Peggy, hang up on him. Done. Oh, real quick, before I forget, it's probably time we played a paid ad. Now, a word from our sponsors. You know how to play an ad, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Done. Thick. Can I grab another beer? Hey, sure thing. Let me grab you one out of the fridge. Oh no, what are you gonna do? The party is going to be over. Not the party. Fear not. The Krillin Spray will give you a free six pack of beer if Gallus High wins this Tuesday. Say what? That's right. Order a meal deal from us and you'll get a free six pack of beer if Gallus High wins. A free six pack? Yeah, a free six pack? I want a free six pack. Six beers if Gallus High wins. Sounds like you've already had enough. Do you seek ancient wisdom? Do you want to double your power? What am I meant to do? To unlock your inner warrior for only $24.99. Then, step into Master Robbie's deadly dojo of Kung Rate and receive direct by video warrior instruction from me, Master Robbie. You will learn the four qualities of an ultimate conqueror. The power of the alligator, the discipline of the tarantula, the speed of the tuna, the poise hey. of the scorpion, and the wisdom uh, of the bull. What have my life become to? What the oh, fuck was that sound? I'll unlock your inner chi after only five 30-minute video sessions. Ultimate power and wisdom can be yours now for the low, low price of only $24.99. Just call 555-7861-USA to take your first step to becoming a champion. Never forget the element of surprise! If you buy today, you'll receive two additional VHS tapes, the Tornado Technique and Karate Love Making. Karate Love Making. Yeah, this guy, this guy definitely knows Diddy. Do people really buy this kind of thing don't pretend like you're not interested i mean i'm not buy them but i might watch them i guess yeah i bet karate love making sure is something uh i uh <laughs> is forrest nash at a loss for words let's just i'll do karate love making if you if you if you if you if, wow. if, if you want peggy it's only 24.99 and i'm not just saying that because they're paying for the airtime 
But unless they pay us more, then it's time to get the show moving along with our next caller. We got another caller? Welcome to the Scream with me, Forrest Nash. Yeah, Leslie. This is Maurice Russell. From the uh, Club my name's Ford. not Leslie. The, uh, this guy just broke in downstairs. Oh, geez, geez, it might be the Whistling Man. Forrest Nash? I want to speak to 911. I am Leslie. not... I am 911. Another one? Nice! <laughs> I am 911. At least for tonight, anyway. Damn it, son. I don't care who you are. Just put me on with Sheriff Matthews. Sheriff Matthews is dead. Dead? What happened? Did you. That's stupid fucking thing. Are you willing to do an interview for the reporter? I can cite you as an anonymous source, if that's a concern. We're live on the air. Anything we say can and will be broadcast. Live on... Damn it. All right. There's obviously a lot more going on than I know. Yeah, you, there's a lot happening tonight. Yeah, uh, no one's died right? yet besides uh, the sheriff. The stupid fan is about to... Some idiot kid just broke in. Dressed as the whistling man. Uh, the prank caller. They do. Brain rot. Skibbity Ohio Riz. That shit's gonna kill you. Uh... Now he's back. Maurice, I don't know what's going on, but he's back. The Whistling Man is back. Don't be an ass, Nash. Every year this happens. They think it's funny. Not a big deal, old man. But they didn't live through the terror 30 years ago. Anyway, I know for a fact. Edward Marshall Mooney is dead. I don't know who I'm looking at on the security monitor. But if he killed Sheriff Matthews... Where are you now? At the board. Upstairs. We got security cameras all around the building. You can watch them on any TV set here. Set in the board. Uh, can you get out of there? Is there any way you can get out of there? Uh, I sure as shit hope so, kid. But I'm not sure how I'm going. He to seems very. Maurice sounds very like body. happy that the Whistling Man is, is probably going to kill him. I'm guessing the stairs are the only way out. That's right. And it would take me a good few minutes to move those cabinets. We need to do something. But what? All we can do from here is... I know what to do. I think I've got it. Why don't what? we call the killer? Can no, you are you an idiot, Peggy? Office, right? In different rooms, with different extensions? So we call one of them. Draw the killer away. Uh... Five minutes time. That could work. Exactly! It's worth a shot. I can hear you, you know. The son of a bitch hasn't killed me yet. Sorry, Maurice. Peggy and I were just trying to figure out... You realize how stupid that plan sounds, right? Yeah, but... For that to be successful... Peggy thinks it would work. every phone extension. Plus, a plan of the entire office floor. All delivered while the killer is en route. I've got it. Thank God I've always been... Pressure. Don't go anywhere. This dude reminds me of Captain Quark from uh, Reg and Clank. You... You don't think the killer got him, do you? Mr. Russell. I'm here. Freak's going to be here any second too. Go check your fax machine. Okay. Don't I'll go pick up that map then. Go, Forrest! The fax machine run, Forrest, run! The other side of the hall. Thanks, Peggy. Be right back. Okay. Go to the office on the other Don't side. Don't tell the me hall. this whistling Grab man situation. Easy. Needs a key. This must be it. Don't tell me the. Oh, uh, this game is going to be like Scream. 
where there's actually two Whistly Mans running about. Yep. Yes, I have. Mr. Russell, you, uh, you still with us? I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got it right here. Yeah, I got it right here. Good. I knew you could at least manage that. Okay, folks, we're back on the line with Maurice. Let's see if we can help him. Avoid the, <laughs> the screen. Man. Here's the situation. The whistling man searched every room in the hall leading up to the boardroom. Now he's in the office next door. 360 no scope. It's now an uh. This plan of yours better work. I'm ready on uh. my end, Forrest. Again, we want to draw the killer away by dialing an extension number. Uh. And then move Maurice somewhere safe. Fuck. So, what extension should I call? Okay. Kitchen. Call the kitchen. The extension is zero two. Got it. I'll put the call through. I think I just fucked up. I think I just fucked up. You're ready. I think All I right. just fucked up. I think I just dumb mess up. Situation. The whistling man searched every. Okay, I, I should stop doing this and actually pay attention to this thing. So... Yeah, kitchen won't work. Kitchen won't work. Again, we want to draw the killer away by dialing an extension number. Yeah, it can't be the kitchen. then move Marie somewhere safe. It can't be the kitchen. What extension should I call? We want to move him the furthest away, so... Editor's office. Call the editor's office. The extension is 03. Got it. I'll put the call through when you're ready. All right, Nash. Where do I need to go? Now you can go to the kitchen. We're moving to the kitchen. Yeah. I was meant to move. I thought we were moving into the kitchen before. Go somewhere he's already checked. Not bad, Nash. I'm ready to place the call. Are you ready, Mr. Russell? Don't have much choice, do I? Make the call. Yes, sir. Calling now. Yeet. I can't believe it! He's actually heading to my office! It was all Peggy's idea. Credit goes to her. Ah, uh, don't mention it. The coast is clear. Uh. I'm shutting off the TV so he won't see me on the security cameras. Nice. Making my move. I'll call when I get there. Do you think he'll make it okay? I'm sure he'll be fine. But now what do we do? We gotta find some way for him to get past that barricade. What do you mean? I don't think calling the whistling man is gonna buy Maurice enough time to move those cabinets. We gotta think of something else. Maybe we could... Oh! Calling coming. You ready? Ready, ready as I'll ever be. Put him through. Alrighty. Mr. Russell, are you there? I am. I don't think he saw me. I gotta give you credit for not out of the woods yet. Uh, right, let's review where we are. So, the only way out is by the stairs, which the whistling man has blocked with furniture. Exactly. It's do something like Troy Baker, but it's not. The furniture out of the way. Not quickly or quietly. Uh, can you lock him in a Could room? Can you lock him in a room? That probably buy you time enough, right? Maybe. Damn fire rig. Conspiracies, Peggy. I may have borrowed a few tapes from our manager's office. 
He has quite the collection. Will you two chatterboxes pipe down? Uh, they can't hear us. Okay, where, where's that on the map? We can catch the son of a gun. Exactly. Oh my god, Forrest, we might be able to end the nightmare right here. So should I call the secret archive then? You can't. The archive is a room for secrets, not gossip. So we don't have a phone in there. Oh, we're gonna need to change it up then. Oh. Any ideas, Forrest? Uh, we, we can use a radio. Maybe we could use a radio. There's no radio in the secret archives. Are there no radios at your offices? I don't have one in That's the fucking ridiculous. What is it? There we go. Sports Hopkins. He has a little portable radio he never turns off when he's here. That might be what we need then. Is his portable radio still there? It should be. It's what he calls his work radio. It should be. Archives, actually. I'll sneak over while our friend is still distracted with his search. <clears throat> you back once I yeah. Who did that? What? We're gonna save him, Forrest. Heck, if this works, we might even save the whole town. Peggy, shut up! You're gonna jinx it. We're close. Let's make. But it you are right. How can we fail? I mean, it's a plan with. Famous words of Leonard Snart from The now? Flash. Ash, hello? Make a plan. Ash, are you there? I'm here. Execute Is the plan. Okay? I found the radio. Throw away the plan. Right it it's all Three step together. plan. I'm just gonna turn it on quickly, make it's sure foolproof. Still got some juice. Oh, sorry. The full quote is Maurice, turn the volume down. We don't want that thing blasting just yet. Yeah, yeah, I knew that, Ash. No, the close one. But, but, I mean, isn't the quote is, the execute works. the plan, wait, make a plan, execute the plan, alive. expect the plan to go I off the rails, throw off. away the plan. Let's do it for Hopkins, Forrest. For whoever Hopkins is. I can't press any buttons. Sixteen. I know that's your station number, but a good editor always double checks. Can you confirm that? You got it. One eighty nine point sixteen. Good. I got the radio on silent, but I tuned it. Now I just need to get to my office. Sounds like we need to make another call, Forrest. Where should we send the killer? Boardroom, furthest away. Call the boardroom. The extension is zero four. That might work. The boardroom is fairly close to the editor's office, but we haven't seen the killer go there yet. Are you sure? Fuck. No, I'm trusting my gut. Make the call. Sure. Make the call. Make the call. Okay, I'm calling the boardroom. Make the now. call. Through this nightmare. Any idea what you'll say to draw the killer in? I'm gonna do my best impersonation of Maurice. I think that'll draw the killer in. What's your Mr. Russell impression? I think I gave that mask freak the slip. Draw the J. Jonah Jameson. Uh, I'll give you an A for effort. Yeah, oh, I'll give effort. You. Here we go. I'm here. The radio set up in the secret archive. Just give me the signal, and I'll turn it all the way up. Where will you hide in the meantime? I am. Good question. It's under my desk, but uh, you can see under it. I've got a big cabinet. Hide in the cabinet! Take me a second to get into. Anywhere else? Uh, not really. Cabinet! There's the secret archive itself, but uh, that's where the kill is going. I could try the cubicles, but they're pretty far away. Nah, under. Cabinet. Your judgment has kept me alive so far, Nash. 
Cabinet. Never check. They never check the cabinet. Hide in your cabinet. All right. Well, this is it. I'm going to go turn the radio up. They weren't expect it. Now. Don't say anything until I've had time to hide. You got it. We know the plan. You can trust yeah, us. you can trust me. Here we go. You can trust me. Yeet. 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 I think it should be safe now, Forrest. Uh, that. No more hiding. I'm a tough old man. I've been on the beat longer than you've been alive. Come on down, whistling man. Come and get a knuckle sandwich. Listeners, this is Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And if you've just tuned in... See you in hell, kid! We just locked up The Whistling Man. <laughs> yeah, we just did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Beautiful bastard! <laughs> I can't believe that actually worked! Frankly, neither can I. Was there any evidence? Come on, Maurice, was there ever any doubt? Thank God it's over. Stupid off. fucking no. fan. Yo, you, you want to fight, bro? You want to fight? That's my thought. I'll think about it. We'll see what tomorrow brings. I'll take that as a yes. Talk to you soon. There we are, folks. The Whistling Man is locked up. Let's all take a deep breath. Whistling Man is all locked up. Killer tunes. Game over? Huh. Enjoy this classic by Smooth. It's their hit song, The Word. <laughs> the Word. Looks like the night should be pretty easy from here on out. Right? Thank God that's over. I guess we got some downtime now. I could ask you some questions to kill the time. You're gonna interview me. You sure about that? You're not so scary. Besides, you sure? I buy it. Like a week now, but not hard though. Still all shrouded in mystery. I well, girls like a little bit of mystery, don't they? All right, shoot. What do you want to know? Question one. Tell me about your family. Okay, that's a bit too personal. Come on, Peggy. That's too general. Okay. Did anyone move with you to Gallows Creek? Nope. Now that's Are you asking specific. if I'm... She's trying to ask if I'm single. Specific? I... Do you have any siblings? I don't. I'm an only child, and my folks are dead. Oh, I'm sorry, Forrest. <laughs> You're sorry? Why? <laughs> why? Did you do it? <laughs> oh, it's okay, Peggy. That's how it goes. Anyway... What about you? Any siblings? Your mom and pop still around? I thought I was asking the questions. Hey, sure. general, general question. No. Oh, well, my folks went the same way as yours. They did? They, uh, they, they left? They left you? Oh, what happened there? My dad walked out when I was about 13. <laughs> womp womp. He's been a wreck for a while. I'm guessing he, he I'm guessing he didn't get the milk. Well, that was dad. Mom didn't take it well. She remarried pretty quick after that. She wanted to forget dad so bad. She even made me take my stepdad's last name. So I'm Peggy Weaver now. Anyway, Mr. Weaver got sick one day and my mom didn't last long after he went. I'm sorry to hear that, Peg. Don't call me Peg. Yeah, sorry. I was just trying to be... It's okay, I know. I'm sorry. I'm defensive about that. Let me grab you one out of the fridge. Any siblings? Funny you mention that now. No. Not anymore. I had a sister, but I haven't seen her since before my dad. Hold on. Someone just rang the door buzzer. Why on earth could someone want at this hour? I don't know. 
Do you want to go check it out? Me? You sure you don't want to go? I can't leave the booth while we're on air. One of Reggie's K fan regulations. I'll pass you the key to the stairs. Beers, if Gallows High wins. Sounds like you've already had enough beers. I hope we murder them. Okay. Down to the first floor. Check the door. Just give me a second. Come on down to Griffin Square. I'll call off 555 749 8335. We've got barbecue you'll die for. I'll be right back. Teddy Gallows Jr. is a family man, a devout Christian, and a proud patriot. Teddy Gallows Jr. is Gallows Jr. Is it this one? Can I go upstairs? No. Oh, I don't like this. Yeah, no, I don't like... A tape play on air. Yeah, no, GG's. That's like... Let's open this. Let's see what's back here. I want to suss things out. What is these? Nice. New music to play. New music. Lock. For now. For now, you say. What else is down here? We got a mouse trap with some cheese on it. Yup, man, I'll low key eat that cheese right up. What is all this? So is there like secret records like hiding around then? I didn't I don't think I saw any in here. Yeah no, it doesn't look like it. Oh wait, I can open these? Uh that nah, doesn't look like it. Any other drawers I could open? Ooh. Nah. How about anything here? Nah. I already checked all in here. Someone needs to... Yeah, someone needs, definitely needs to clean the toilets. They smell of dookie. And why do we have two female bathrooms? Why is there a bottle of alcohol in here too? Yeah, look. Female. Female. So no, that's male, that's female. Never mind. Never mind. Ignore me. I'm crazy. I think I played that one already. What's this one? I'll play this next. Uh. Hello, Gallows Creek. Time to pay the price. Time to pay for lies. Time to sit there. I will punish you. I'm going to enjoy this. What? Was he about to say what I think was about to say? I did not enjoy that. What the hell was that? I... Oh, Forrest, we're still on air. Say something. 
Folks, the... Oh! <clears throat> Folks, the tape you just heard was passed through our door only moments ago. I don't know how or why that came through our door with the killer locked up, but be careful, Gallows Creek. Stay home and stay safe. Give us a call if you need help. You can get us on 911. What time is it now? One o'clock, easy. Hey, we had a call come in. Collar, you're on 189.16. The Scream. With Ash, shut up and listen to me. Mr. Russell, what's wrong? Are you okay? I said listen. He's gone. The whistling man is gone. Oh, great GG's. God damn it, I thought you locked him up. What's going on? Damn if I know Nash. Mr. Russell, where are you now? What happened? Well, after our call, I cleared the stairs and went home. I phoned some buddies. We came back here to keep watch. Then what happened? I'm getting to that. We came back here. The door was shut, just as I left it. We had a couple of drinks, and, well, there was a bunch of us, and we were all armed. They thought we could teach the freak a lesson. I don't blame you. Yeah, I don't blame me. I would have been tempted to do the same. Have you both got a screw loose? You know what the whistling man's done tonight. This was not my idea. The guys just grabbed their weapons and unlocked the door. I braced myself and... Then? Then nothing. The room was empty. The door was still locked. How the hell did he get out? Are you sure it was still locked? I'm telling you, it was locked. No way out of there. Not Maybe. I mean... If you say what I think you're about to say, Peggy... Dead, then... Don't be ridiculous. Don't be ridiculous, Peggy. It would explain things. I Shut mean, up. Then how are ghosts not? killing people? There's no way. Oh, did you say something, Maurice? He seems really spooked. Wouldn't you be if you got attacked by a serial killer who turned out to be a demonic spirit? He's not a demon, Peggy. Yeah, you're probably right. But what do we do now? 104. 104 to 9. Hot tomato. Thank you again, Mrs. McKenzie, for the helpful tip. The bagger at the grocery store cannot whistle. We'll remove her from the suspect list. Let's go to a break. I need you for a second. All right, folks. We need to take a quick break. This one's for all those folks out there keeping the hatches bad. All right, Peggy, what's up? I pushed a cassette under my door. Go play it. No, I, I want to see something. I want to listen to all, I want to hear all the songs. Sounds like take on me. Ooh, I like this one. Play me ASAP on air. Franklin, I'm calling because your backwater station has not honored our agreement. 
we gave you Mr. Snatcher's newest single, the kind of honor you never had and probably never will again. And we've still not received any information about when you're fitting it into your busy programming. I'll be frank, I didn't want you as part of the state. Oh my but god. Mr. Snatcher, due to his prior friendship with Mr. Nash. Prior and current friendship, Gina. Forest Nate, you alright? Don't worry about Gina, you know how she is. All right, yeah, I've got it. Did we forget an ad or something? Man. I don't know, it was buried in my work now. I only yet. just saw it. Really See what it says. Uh, play me ASAP, off air. That's Reggie's handwriting. And he wrote it in purple. And? Purple is Reggie's angry color. He only writes in purple when he's really pissed off. Purple message, all right. I'll put it on. That was Roddy Snatcher, Forrest. You know, Roddy Snatcher? I hope it's nothing serious. Yeah, Roddy and I are... Yeah, I mean, we're old friends, but... Roddy. I will always find you with my song. I wish we still had it in rotation. Oh, my God. I can't believe you know Roddy Snatcher. And I can't believe you didn't tell me he sent you his new single. We have to play Final Breath. Where is it? I found it earlier, hidden away at reception. Ugh, why didn't Barbara say anything? I mean, well, if that fiasco last Friday about the missing knife and easy track is any indication, folks at KFAM aren't against hoarding station music for personal use. I think we're still missing a few tracks, actually. Well, we have it now. Let's put it on. Yeah, it just did. Gallows Creek. I'm pleased to say we're in for a much needed treat. Up next, courtesy of the British Sensation British himself, Sensation is himself. Like you won't hear everywhere. Here's Final Breath by Roddy Snatcher. Wow. Oh, Don't say it like that. More it sounds like you're moaning. Safe from the worst of Gina Franklin. Titties. I'm sorry. No, that every time I've seen him live. Peggy, you just talked through the whole song. Oh, whoops. It's okay. I can just play it on loop later. Oh, shoot. I just noticed we have a caller waiting. I really hope it's nothing serious. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16. The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand-in. This is... Murphy! Okay, Murphy. Hello, Eddie Murphy? Murphy? Uh, what have you got for us tonight? Two things, Forrest. First, happy birthday to my son, Fernando. Happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday, yeah. Fernando. Being his daddy has changed my life. I, I've learned to I, I'm pretty sure any, uh, any father would be would change their life at the moment they become a father. Out of love. Oh, happy birthday, Fernando. Shut up, Peggy. I just said it. Stop trying to copy me. Happy birthday, Fernando. Thanks. And now, my other thing. I'm putting the word out to this. Oh, oh no. Killer. You think you're tough, huh? Big man, big knife. Murphy's an idiot. Come face me, a true warrior, at the gallows waste disposal plant. Yes, boy. Uh, oh boy, here we go. Oh boy. Here we go. I got all the tapes. Raffer Robin told no secrets. Get ready. Whistling man. The junkyard dog. The junkyard dog. Speed? Oh no. Yeah, he's an idiot, but oh well, GG's, I guess. Ladies and gentlemen, keep your fingers crossed for Murphy as he tries to become our hometown hero. Although, having heard that Master Robbie ad earlier, uh, well, don't get your hopes up too much. <sighs> anyway, we'll be right back after this commercial. The world-famous annual Gallows Creek Harvest Festival is back! We got it all out on Giblet Field. We got the Little Miss Harvest Pageant, Princess Harvest Pageant, Harvest Queen Pageant, Cotton Candy, Corn Dogs, Cornhole, Corn on the Cob, Crokinole, Country Music, Can Jam, Jams, Jellies, Jamborees, Juggling, Roller Rickies, Roller Disco Lessons, 
train. We got baby crawling, balloon popping, balloons for sale, beard contest, horseshoes, hayride, hay toss, hey you there, safe donkeys and ponies, apple bobbing, firearm, fireworks, funnel cakes, fried dough, seats, bitten, sand licking, cracker cramming, and cat shop. And fake tattoo, face painting, puppets, petting zoo, amazing maze maze, square dancing, story swapping, spelling bee, quilting bee, and sewing circle, pie eating, lawnmower racing, hot dog eating contest, flower contest, and of oh my course, God, our famous Lord Measure All. The festival is brought to you by Mayor Linda Cartwright, sponsored by Gallows and Sons Factory, and dedicated to the memory of Garrett Miley, tragically taken from us last festival. I can see why it's world famous. It's a highlight around here for us. Oh, I am sorry to hear that, Peggy. All right, folks, welcome back to the show. We have a note from my producer. That's right. Come find me at the Harvest Festival tomorrow to grab your choice of a KFAM mug, sticker set, or poster. Let's see what our next caller would choose. We got a caller. You know what to do. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Hello? Hello? Who is this? Oh, they're telling me another prank call. Hello. Are, are you still with us? Forrest? He called me. That horrible whistling down the phone. He's coming for me? Jesus. Hey, listen, Colin, don't panic. We've done this a few times now. We can help you. A few times already? So, you saved them, or? We sure did. You're in safe hands. Okay. Okay. We're gonna help you. Can you tell me your name, Collar? I'm Dr. Sullivan of Virginia. Sorry. Take some deep breaths, Virginia. You're gonna be okay. Yeah, you're gonna be fine, Virginia. I won't. Just calm down. Tell me where you are right now. What's your address? I'm... I'm... Oh, God. Call a neighbor. Is there a neighbor you can call for help? No. Everyone's away tonight. There's just a fraternity down the street. You live by a frat house? Yes. They're having a, a trap house? Take out and I, did I hear that right? Virginia, what's the name of the frat? It's... Oh, God. I can't think. I, I can't... Any idea what the frat might be, Peggy? If I knew where she was, I might know, but... Wait, the takeout. If we can get takeout to the frat, we can get a message to them to go and help. Virginia, who did they order takeout from? I don't know. Uh, don't worry. Don't worry. We'll figure it out. Well, folks, seems like our Virginia hung up. While we try Teddy to figure Gallows out what Jr. takeout to order, here's some music for your own Jr. midnight snacks. And a proud patriot. Teddy Thank Gallows, Gallows Jr. Jr. What places do takeout in Gallows Creek? Off the top of my head? Like his father, uh, well, his father's before him. There's the barbecue Gallows place, Jr. grilling spree, Gallows and you can John order from Chalupa Cabrits. Oh, and of course Creek you have Auntie Pizza. Yeah, let's, let's get her some pizza. Unlike let's get her. Unlike current mayor, Linda Cartwright. All right. Teddy Gallows we'll call Jr. place and ask to deliver to tonight. That's not going to work. Takeout client privilege. What? what? If that's not a thing, don't cap. Don't cap, Peggy. That's not a thing. But what we can do is this. We figure out where the frat boys order from. Call the takeout, pretending to be from the frat. Place an order and include a note asking them to call the American dream. There's no other way, is there? Not that I can see. Teddy Gallows Jr. Ready to get to it. It's not wasting any time then. That's the spirit. become mayor. Take any suggestions and we're going to break. Check the offices for anything Teddy Gallows related. Jr. And maybe the kitchen downstairs. You'll need oh, of course she wants me to go check the kitchen. My door now. Thanks, Peggy. What are you trying to insinuate, Peggy? God, where to start? What would make me order from somewhere if I were a party frat boy? Grilling spree. I better see what's on this tape. We have a food critic, right? Chad or Brad or... I just have to look around. Do you seek ancient wisdom? Hey, 
Find anything useful? Your power. Are you ready to unlock your inner warrior for only $24.99? Then step into Master Robbie's deadly dojo. I'll go and look again. All right. Don't take too long. Virginia needs our help. From me, Master Robbie. What's this key for? Stoth area. That's not opening. Anything food related. Here we go. Nice little cleaning area. Oh, here's the kitchen. What's over here then? Oh, we got an exit. So many locked doors, so few keys. Locked tight. Locked tighter than Fort Knox. Uh, okay. Staff area, right? Fridge check. Nothing. Okay. Um. Ruby the trash. This is a new one. Ponty's pizza. Ooh. Interesting offer. I wonder how well Gallo's high performed. Oh my god. Yeah, so, yeah, that music. Um. What else do we got in here? Out of order. I wanted to play some video games. High grade video cassette. Okay. Bro, we got Ponty's, the Ponty, Ponty Pizza Box. I just wanted to see if there's any more records, because the but the look, ooh. Nice, new music to play. Look at that. Did it, Peggy? Hey, find anything useful? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. Yes, I have. That's great. Are you ready to get back on the line? Uh, yes. Let's make the call. Stop picking up, Bart. Time to turn the music off. Okay, Forrest. What lippy? Ponty's pizza. Oh, Ponty's pizza. You got it. Ponty's Pizza is on the line. Ponty's Pizza! May I take your order? Hey, dude. Hey, dude. What's going on? Uh, may I take your order? Garlic bread. I need some garlic bread. Oh, I need the bread! Can do? Where do you want that delivered? Uh, same place as before, you know. The frat house. Got it. And we'll have that over to you right away. Oh, and, and one more thing. Can you add a note to the order that says to call KFAM? KFAM? Oh, consider it done. The folks at KFAM are huge fans of Bonty's Pizza, you know. I should really call them and let them and now we wait. We should put a song on. Agreed. This one goes out to our delivery workers. 
This is I'm coming to get you. Bye bye. I'm coming to get you. <laughs> I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. Okay. Which of the takeout places would you order from? To save Virginia? No. Wh where would you actually eat? Oh, I mean, they're all pretty equal. Equally awful or equally good? You mean equally good? Yeah, not Ponty. He's not. He's special. Right. So, between grilling spree and chalupa coffee. Fucking, I hate this fan. Do I want a plate full of meat? Or do I want really, I have meat. Really good I mean, what? It can change depending on the day, you know? Yeah, fair enough. Maybe I. Hold that thought for us. We've got a call coming in. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. <laughs> hey, 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 this is Fredman Bunker. We got some calling, man, and I'd love to call this number. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Bunker, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. The, the Scream. scream. Um, no, 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 this is Forrest. No, this is Forrest Nash, host of... Uh, uh, sure thing, Goose. Uh, listen, I need you to... Goose, come get beer. Your brother's awaiting for you. I'm not Goose. I. Uh, how can I prove this to you? <laughs> Let me get a second opinion on this. Norman the Barbarian! What do you think? Really? What? The flow? Norman the Barbarian demands it. Okay, okay. I'll play the damn song. Oh, shit. Okay, okay, Radio Man. Okay, okay, Radio attention. Man. What is it? Thank God. Listen, you've got to get over to your neighbor's house. All of you, just... Say no more. Bunker's moving the house. Forrest. Line two. Hello, you're live on 189.16. The Scream. Ah, oh, GG's. Yeah, let's get dancing. We brought the beer. Good times are here. I could use a drink. Thank you, Forrest. It's all good. You're I did a good thing. Virginia. And thank you to Plunker and his fraternity brothers. Fraternity Some brothers wear yeah. capes. Some wear sheets as togas. <laughs> hey, hey Forrest, did you hear what Virginia said earlier? What was that all about? Clive, I didn't talk. Do you know what she meant? There's a janitor here at the station named Clive, but your guess is as good as mine. All right, folks. It seems we may have a lead. If any of you know a suspicious Clive, then please call in. It could save lives. In the meantime, looks like we have another call. Already? Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. It's great to speak with you, Morris. As a local small business owner, oh my God, it's all horrifying. A killer roaming the streets of our fair town. I swear, this is Ponty. I hear you there. It's a scary time for everyone. Creek. How are you holding up? You somewhere safe tonight? Yes, Morris, I am. I'm here at work. One two, one two, one two, one two. Peggy, I think it's Ponty, so you might want to hang up now. Oh, what small business do you own? Oh, well, I'm not really big. I, I swear, it's Ponty. Ponty. Since you ask, it's Ponty's Pizza. 
Stop calling this number! Come on down! I get yourself a cracking deal on our two for one! God damn it, Ponty, no! No free ad! I mean, I guess we can't be that mad at him. Colin Ponty did save Virginia. No, we saved mad. Virginia. Sort of thing, just... With Ponty's yeah. help. I can be mad. Look, he's gone now. We already have somebody else on the line. Just already? take a deep breath and let's keep going. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand-in. Hi. Hello? Eugene? Am I on air? Sure are, caller. What's your name? But what have you got for us tonight? Name's Eugene Stein. And I've got a heart full of love, Forrest. I'm hanging out in the middle of the maze maze, listening to your show. Looking up at the stars and waiting for her. You got a special lady coming out to see you. Yeah. Molly. Yeah, she's probably dead. We planned to get lost in the maze maze tonight. To take our first journey together into the love labyrinth. She's probably dead, not gonna That's lie. I'm calling, actually. She's probably I dead. She'd be here an hour ago. Yeah, she's dead. Yeah, she's dead. Should I call her up and ask if she's coming or wait and see? For real, kid? If you've been listening all night, do you really need to ask me? Yes, that's why I'm calling. Yeah, she's dead. Eugene, you really need to go home to your parents. My parents are dead, actually. But, uh... How? Jeez. Oh, yeah, I guess it's not the night. You're cooked. He's cooked. No, no. This is supposed to be the best night of my life. Not the worst. Stay calm. We'll get you out of this, we'll Eugene. Of this. Fucking Forrest, Eugene. I'm about to die a virgin. Listen, Eugene. Breathe. Um, that's not the worst thing in the world. Call back in a minute. We'll get you out. I... I'll do it for Molly. But please, hurry. Well, listeners... While Peggy and I deliberate, here's a track for all you lovers out there. Hope you enjoy this one as much as I do. How the hell am I supposed to get in through the maze maze? You know Barbara, our receptionist? She's a maze maze fanatic. Is she now? Why'd she change her mind? Why'd she change her mind? She went with that jerk, Brad. And ah, said, fuck Brad. I'm so sorry to hear that, Peggy. It's fine. I'm not the one who had to go out with that jerk, Brad, after all. Maybe we should call Barbara then? If she's so big on the maze maze. We could, but I don't actually know her number. But she probably has maze maze stuff somewhere. Go and see what you can find. That'll hopefully be enough. Which one is Barbara again? Barbara, you know, Barbara. Yeah, oh, Barbara Gordon. Help me out, Peggy. She's the receptionist. Sits at reception. Never does any work because she's talking to Brad all day. Ring any bells? Right, yeah. Sorry, I guess it's just the stress of... No excuses. Just go and find something to help us. Go. Here's what I was looking for.
Okay, okay Peggy. Yeah, I found a map for the maze maze in the trash. Why is it in the trash? Never mind. It doesn't matter right now. That's a question for Barbara later. Eugene called while you were away. He's on line one. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Sh don't tell me how to do my job, bitch. The scream. I hope you lovers like that. There's a reason why I'm here and you're I back there. We can help our lover in the maze maze. Eugene, you're back on air. I'm lost, Forrest. I just ran and I I don't know where I am. Great. I'm at a crossroad. Facing a tractor statue. He's there at number one. Gold on my right. He's at number one, so left. I wanna say left. Go left. I wanna say left. Go back. Go backwards. Oh, God. Why did I just fight her over? Oh. I'm at a crossroads. Okay. There's a pitchfork statue. Number five. Which way? Take a... Go... Take a... Right? No, left. Go left. Whoa, Eugene, I'm so sorry. Nah. There's a tiny barn in front of me. And a scarecrow. Is that number six? How the fuck did side. you get the uh take a Take a right. Go right. Take a right. I can't run much more. I just passed a court silo. Number nine. Else. Take a right. He's nearly there. If he takes a right, he's out. Please. Is that a chainsaw right here, though? Where do I go? Take a right. Go right. I'm so confident. I'm good at mazes. I'm out. Oh, and my bike's still here. <laughs> yes, Eugene. Oh, thank you, Forrest. Anything for you, Eugene. I love you, Molly. Weirdo. That was tense. I think I held my breath the whole time. I think it went pretty well, all told. <laughs> I think you're right. By the way. Why do you think Molly missed their date? Dead. Do you think she's okay? Dead. Unfortunately for Eugene, I think she probably never left home. I'm lucky. 149. Hot tomato. Thank you for calling in, Mr. Walton. We'll make sure to add the town librarian to our list of suspicious Clives. Remember, report a Clive to stay alive. Oh my, Next shut the fuck up, right Peggy. So take it away. Collar, you're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, The Scream. Hey, wonderful show tonight, Forrest. Uh, thank you. Well, that's kind of you to say. Thank you. What's your name, Collar? Uh, you can call me Dawn. Dawn? Could you play my tune, Forrest? Your tune? Sure. Long Ride Home. That old song? Sure. You got it. I think I played it the other day. Thanks. It'll be to hear it again all right folks coming up is that old classic uh forrest i don't think you're gonna find that song what do you mean i played it a few nights ago i know but uh we don't have it anymore what do you mean we don't have it anymore peggy i threw it away why threw it in the trash you're fine no i i threw it out the window earlier today you're fine uh and why did you throw it out the window earlier today? Brad was annoying me all afternoon. He played it on repeat because he knows I don't like it. So I grabbed it and threw it right out of one of the office windows. Not my finest hour, 
But I can only take so much. Uh, for shame, Peggy, for shame. Sorry, sorry about Brad. Brad being a dick. I thanks, Forrest. Let's just play a different song. We've got more important things to think about anyway. Gotcha. Okay, folks. Here comes some unrequested music. Sorry about that, Don. Maybe try again tomorrow night. Sorry. She's not sorry. If she's sorry, she'd she'd go out and get the tune right now. How how did that work? Of all the songs to request, why did it have to be that one? Gee, Peggy, what did the barn finds ever do to you? Wrote that song for one. It gets real old when you're forced to listen to it on repeat for years. <gasps> why couldn't they just request Roddy? Oh, Forrest, scrap the song. We have another caller. Sorry to cut the music short, folks. Callers take priority tonight. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream. The Scream! Murphy? Oh, let me guess. The Whistly Man came to fight you? Ah, oh, Murphy, what did you do? Talk to me, Murphy. What's wrong? Oh, the killer got me, man. I... That's not important right now. Just tell me what happened. Goddamn police. You came to the gallows waste disposal. Let me guess, to fight you? Beat on me, man. Carry me inside and lock me in a dumpster. I what, what? Oh, oh goddamn. I smell smoke. I think he started a fire. Yeah, you he's cooked. We will call for help right now. Get the fire department on the line. On it. All right. Now just come on. They're not going to pick up, are they? Hi. Yes, I'd like to report a fire over at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. It's an emergency. What do you mean it's not operational? Why is there no backup vehicle? He. Oh, God damn it! Son of a bitch slashed the tires on the town's only fire engine. Oh, great. We're cooked. But I have a few friends who live nearby. Who? Hey. Maybe one of them can save them. Where do they live? My friend Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield and Romero Street. And Catherine lives on the west end of Myers Lane. And there's Jericho. On You're the giving. The, of Peggy, Lane. shut the up! Too much not. information right now. Oh. Where, was, where was the first one? Romero okay. Street. I'll check the map, see who would be best to do this. Um, okay. Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield Road next to Romeo Street. Romero Street. Haddonfield, 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 Haddonfield. I can't find Haddonfield. Here we go, Haddonfield. Um so he lives around this area. Um Catherine lives near the west end of Myers Lane. Like where's where's the disposal? there uh mccready street uh, oh wait rogers and Av rogers avenue and helenfield feet of clothes so it can't it can't be the first one it can't be alex it can't be alex so alex lives here but it can't be him uh catherine lives at the west end of myers lane with myers lane i saw it before um, Myers Street, around there somewhere. Ooh, could be her. Uh, old man Jericho lives at the east end of Myers Lane. So he lives here. Then, fire department got is. Sadly, all the way uh, is it down here. Yeah, all the way here. Um, Catherine it has to be Catherine. Has to be Catherine. All right, Forrest. Who should has I call? Has to be Catherine. Who can help Murphy? Your friend Catherine. Call Catherine. All right. 
Give me a second. Yeet. Yeet. No yeet. They're on the way. They'll call from the plant. You can direct them from there. Well, let's hope they get there in time. coming in. It's Catherine. Oh. She and Murphy are now both on the line. Okay. Nice. Hello, Catherine. Are you there? What, uh, what, what's happening at the plant? The whole damn thing is up in smoke. I... God damn it. I'm going in. Oh, my reception is terrible in here. God, my eyes stink. Uh, recycling, wasn't it? Go to recycling. Come on, Catherine. The plants look up again. I can go shredding or crushing. Which way? Murphy, do you know what part of the plant you're in? I'm in a dumpster, man. What do you want from me? You work here. Go to the crusher. Catherine, go to the crusher. How am I meant to know? Henderson? Open the Henderson Mr. Container. Henderson! Are they alive? Are they alive? We made it. Oh, man. They made it? No, I don't do that. Just get home to your son, okay? Will do, Forrest. Well, folks, Gallows Creek has two folk heroes tonight. Murphy and Captain. I'm sure their deeds won't soon be forgotten. Murphy did Great nothing. Job, Forrest. No time to celebrate, though. We got a caller. You know what to do. All right, folks. Another of our good citizens is on the line. Let's see what they have to say. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream. With me, your host, Forrest Nash. Forrest? Teddy? Gallows Jr. Here. Shut up, I Teddy. I just want to say that my thoughts and prayers are with my Gallows Jr. Oh, it's mayoral candidate and scion of the town founders, Mr. Gallows. Are you in danger? We need to be a town of law and order. If he's just doing this for self-promotion, I swear to God. Tools and funding they need to keep he's self-promoting. Okay, Teddy. We... Oh my god, he's gonna pull this card, isn't he? But you're really stepping up the I'm taking a break from I'm taking a break. I just want to say thank you for taking a swing. He sounds like he's gonna be a yapper. Jackass. He's a yapper. Oh, I've gotta say something to him. Fuck. Uh alright, thanks, Teddy. Uh you're pricked it. Uh right. Thanks, Teddy. Now are you Teddy, you low life? This is not the time to promote your damn campaign. I Peggy! Sure She's the mayor! He's the mayor, Peggy! Are you fucking trust. delusional? That's why the Gallows Family Factory, founded by my father, Theodore C. Gallo, God rest his soul, which employs over 200... Teddy, unless you've got an emergency, I'm cutting you off. You know what? I do have a uh, okay, okay. A problem that's ruining our town. You know what it is? Shut the fuck up, Teddy! I didn't
didn't ask about a problem. I said emergency. The problem is that woman, our current mayor. Oh, never mind. He's not the mayor. Linda Cartwright. Oh, here we go. She just isn't one of us. Peggy, for once, Linda I agree with you. Cut him off right now. Cut him off. I don't want to deal with Teddy Jr. anymore. Better than anyone, Teddy. Just because you inherited half the town, it... Your producer sounds a little unstable, too. Don't you dare speak to me that way. Cut him off, Peggy. I can guarantee this kind of thing will not happen when I take office. The moral decay of... And that's enough of Teddy Gallows Jr. for one lifetime. I always feel disgusting after hearing him talk. Just play an ad for us? I need a minute. We'll be right back after these messages. Teddy Gallows Jr. is <laughs> a devout Christian and a proud patriot. Teddy Gallows Jr. is Gallows Jr. Like his father and all his father's Yeah, they just play, that's just Teddy short Gallows talk Jr. shit about Teddy Gallows and just start playing an ad about him. Improve infrastructure and make Gallows Creek a good place to raise a family. Unlike current mayor, Linda Cartwright, Teddy Gallows Jr. lives in Gallows Creek. He's our neighbor. And he stands with our neighbors. Like Sheriff Matthews, who, after years of keeping the peace, Mayor Cartwright is trying to force into early retirement. Teddy Gallows Jr. doesn't believe in keeping a good man out of a job. Teddy Gallows Jr. believes in the American dream. Does Linda Cartwright? Help Teddy Gallows Jr. keep Gallows Creek a good American town. Help him become mayor. Take a swing. For Gallows Creek. <laughs> Vote for Teddy Gallows Jr. Uh, My name is Teddy Gallows Jr. And I approve this message. God, what a jackass. 100% grade A asshole. Linda Cartwright isn't super herself, but she's not... Yeah, we don't have any more of those ads to air tonight, do we? No, just the one. Good. I have to ask, though. Take a swing for Gallows Creek. Uh, he set the home run record for Gallows Creek High. Uh, of course he's one of those guys. Yep, he played lots of sports back in the day, and he never lets anyone forget it. Right. Let's just get back to the show. Well, folks, hearing that reminds me that every vote matters. That ad really made me want to take a swing at Teddy Gallows. <laughs> Peggy did a, a funny! Teddy Gallows. Yeah, sure. Let's find out from our next caller... Who's got their vote? Caller on line one. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. <laughs> you uh, good? Hello, caller. Who is this? I need the police. I'm I am Forrest the police. Nash. I, <clears throat> I'm standing in for 911 tonight. What, what's wrong? Oh, GG's. That's him. He's just outside. I can see him from up here. God damn it. She's just a kid. Where are you? Are, are you somewhere safe? Oh my god. Oh my god. Stay with me, kid. Focus. I can't do this. Yes, you can. Focus. Tell me. What's your name? Sweetie, you can do it. What's your name? Carrie. Good, good. Carrie, listen to me. We're gonna get you out of there, all right? Now, where are you? The old murder house. The old murder house, where's that? I'm at the end of the hall. Chup Chalupa Cabard, it sounds like a murder house. I don't know. I don't know. Um. Closet. I 
Don't move! Did they really just prank us? What the hell is going on here? <laughs> oh, who's on the phone, Carrie? The cops? It's just a joke, jeez. Wait, isn't that... Jimmy, that wasn't funny, you sicko! Of course I called the cops, but some guy just answered instead. What guy? Horace Nash. What the hell are you all doing? It's prank night, old man. We're just having fun. That's the kid. The kid who called in earlier pretending to be the whistling man. That's it. I'm out of here. <sighs> yeah, you're sick, Jimmy. Jimmy, this is a pretty sick thing to do. What? It's whistling night. That little idiot. Whistling night? It's a stupid tradition. Especially stupid since that one kid died back in... <sighs> Would you take off that stupid mask if it's hard to breathe? Who's under there anyway? Is that you, Seth? Idiot! Seth is right next to you. That's, uh... Uh... Wait... All the... Oh, shit! Who the whistling man just knocked his way in! Everyone, get inside! Ah, oh, gee, jeez, Jimmy's dead! Everyone, run! Good luck throw! Time, not much. Forrest, Fuck. we have to. Heather, I already called the cops. Forrest picked up. He's the best we're gonna get. Who is with you, Carrie? My friend. We drove out to the old murder house and. Oh, of course! The van! I give up. Keys. Jimmy had them. Ah, oh, yeah, GG's. <sighs> Jimmy had it coming. Jimmy had it coming. Ah, uh, GG's Jimmy. GG's Jimmy. Okay, okay. It's gonna be okay, Carrie. Right. Right. We'll figure something out. Between all of you, there's gotta be a way to beat this. Just sit tight, okay? Now he wants to... Shut up. If we do that, we're gonna get killed. If only Jeannie were here. Jeannie? Jeannie McPherson? Our intern, Jeannie? Yes. She's my best friend and the smartest one out of all of us. She stayed in tonight. Force, listen. We'll see what we can come up with and, uh... What? Oh, they have a anyway. Chad. And, no, no, Chad. Yeah, no, I'm Chad. Don't do it. No one likes a Chad. Everything okay? No. We, uh, Especially a Giga Chad. Okay. Or else these idiots are gonna get killed. But I. Shut up, you. Oh, Boris, I'll call you back. And I don't know anything about your friends. Oh, yeah, GG, they're all dead. <sighs> these damn kids never learn. Yeah, I know, right? I know, right? Breathe, Peggy. It's okay. <sighs> they do this kind of thing every year, Forrest. People get hurt. All right, <clears throat> folks. We're gonna work out a way to save Carrie and her friends. This next one goes out to all the trapped kids out there. Peggy, you mentioned something about their friend working here? An intern? Yeah, Jeannie. Seems a nice enough girl, but a bit head in the clouds, you know? Not sure why we took on an intern. We really didn't have the office space for one. Poor thing got tucked away in a dark corner somewhere downstairs. <laughs> part, huh? All right, I'll go see if I can find her desk. Hopefully, she has something we can use. Oh no! Who's that a 
Peggy said her desk is downstairs. Downstairs. Got it. Um. Downstairs where? Janie's desk is downstairs where, Nash? Jeez. They really tucked Janie away. Oh, damn. Friendship oh, here we go. Quiz. Found something. This might work. What was that? What was that? Find anything that'll help us out? Yeah, I found a friendship quiz with all these kids on it. If you think that'll help, then good enough. Carrie's on line one. Whenever you're ready. Let's do this. This is Forrest Nash back again with an unlucky caller on this unlucky night. Carrie, are you there? Yes, we've got a plan, but we can't agree on who should do what. You want me to be the tiebreaker? Exactly. I'm ready. What's the first step? A spotter. It's gonna be a hard climb. We're deciding between Heather, Kyle, and Hot David. Uh. Well, that was a Who should cl oh, climb? Oh, climber. Who should climb into the? Who's the best climber? End up in prison. Most likely to peak. Mount uh, Heather. It's gotta be Heather. Heather's got this. Yes, Heather. He picked you. Now please stop talking about all your cheerleading trophies. Hey. Part two. The whistling man padlocked the gate back to the road. Before we drive out of here, we need someone to pick the lock. Um. Seth, Jennifer, and Scott all want to do it. Most likely to win for worst poker face. No. Most likely to end up in prison, Seth. It's gotta be Seth, right? Most likely to escape prison, actually, no. Most likely to escape pr Jennifer. Jennifer. Jesus, Jennifer, you carry a bump key? Why didn't you say so earlier? Anyway, that brings us to part three. Getting the van keys. I'll volunteer for this. I don't know Jimmy as well as you guys, so... It'll probably be easier that way. Then is part four. Uh... This is a very detailed plan. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, it's weirdly easier to think when you're about to die. You're doing great. What's the next part? Part four. We need someone to lead the whistling man away. We need a fast runner. For this one, we're trying to... Hot David. Between... Who was it again? Hot David. Cynthia. And Scott. Fuck Scott. Uh, Hot David. Hot David. <laughs> Did you yeah, hear him? Ha <laughs> ha. What's the plan there? Well, we can't all outrun the whistling man. But he thinks we're just a bunch of stupid teens. So, let's use that against him. Part five, we trick the killer into a trap. Someone can pretend to be injured. Who would make the most believable? Who you got? We got Lisa, Tammy, and Cynthia. Um... Well, okay, that's a trophy. Ah, uh, Lisa. I'm guessing. Who should, who should use acting to lure the killer in? 
Has to be Lisa because she has the least amount on the award for worst poker face. She, she she's not even on there. So Lisa. Lisa. Whoa. You're right, Lisa. Having to smile at rude customers is perfect practice. That should take care of the killer. And then it's time to get out of here. Finally, part six. We need someone who can drive us through the woods and back to Gallows Creek alive. Who's our getaway driver? Should it be? Who have we got? No, I'm not trusting Chad behind. No, not Scott. Whatever. Forrest, you know what to do. Um, who should drive the van? Uh, nah, Cynthia. Cynthia. I know we all love watching American Skid. Yes, I. Yeah. Just do. It's got to be Cynthia. Uh. Thanks, Forrest. We'll just take a few seconds for ourselves, and then it's go time. Sounds good. Talk to you in a sec. Good luck, Carrie. That actually sounded like a pretty good plan. Impressive as hell, right? Damn straight. My little pile of nothingness. Of useful uh uselessness. I should say. Um play some music. Oh, the kids are back already. Line one again. Really? If you're just tuning in, we're coming to you live with a bunch of teens about to flee a madman. Listener discretion is advised. Are you ready, Carrie? We're good to go, Forrest. Good luck. And Godspeed. <laughs> Got this. Hey, Godspeed, go, Pilgrim. To the roof. Go, Heather. She's off and away. All right, Renner. Get ready. Wait for the spotter's signal. Spotter's signal. Keys, Carrie. You need to get the van keys. His face is lying next to him, Forrest. He got guy. Oh, God. Focus. You gotta focus. Focus. Breathe. You got this. We got this. Next step, trap the killer. All right. Wait. Get into position. Everybody else, hide. Okay, performer. Now, act like your life depends on it. Uh, oh. There he is. Why was she moaning? Oh my god! He went through the floor! <laughs> <laughs> that it's a man. Drive. Now. Uns, 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 uns. But Kobe Did that go in? Kobe Did that go in? Oh my god. 
Kobe. Wait, she not dead? Carrie? Carrie? Just stared at me and walked into the woods. I don't understand. She's not dead. Thank God you're okay. Can you get somewhere safe? <sighs> How is she not dead? Thank you both for helping. If you hadn't, I We're it saving everyone. Plan, We're saving everyone. It's a great plan. It was all you. It was really all you, Carrie. Still, I need to get home. I... Breathe, Carrie. You're okay now. I'll call you when I'm somewhere safe. Talk to you then. Folks, that was a... That was a lot. No, it's kind of stressful. Thoughts go Not, out I didn't have to do anything. I just need to sit behind my desk and call me. For any kids listening in, please stay inside and stay safe. And parents, hug your kids extra tight tonight. Here's a song. Uh, no, don't do that. The girl walking home in the dark. Hey, we had a call come in. When you're ready, shut the music off. Horace Nash here. Listeners, we've got another caller live on 189.16, The Scream. What's on your mind, caller? Hey, Forrest, I just wanted to phone in and say that I think I speak for everyone when I say that you're providing a real service for Gallows Creek tonight. It's cool what you're doing, man. Well, I'm just doing my job, friend. Anyway, tell me about yourself. What's your name? Are you keeping safe tonight? Yeah, man, I'm good, thanks. I'm at my roller rink trying to get everything ready for the Harvest Festival tomorrow. I had a guy from Starlink Security here earlier installing the Starlink 4000 system, so I'm a little behind. As for my name, my friends call me Roller Ricky. Roller Ricky! Roller Ricky! We're friends now, huh? Well, that's kind of you to say. Thanks. Yeah, man. Sounds like roller skating is more than just a job to you. So is this vocational? I wasn't always Roller Ricky. Once upon a time, believe it or not, I used to go by just Ricky. Yeah, back then, things were pretty rough. I used to roll with a bad crowd. Not all bad, but there was one guy. Anyway, uh, some bad stuff went down. I harbored a lot of guilt for a long time and turned to the bottom. I didn't really talk about it or, or even know how to talk. It's just how it was. That bottle took the best years of my life. So I thought. It's never too late, Roller Ricky. How did you turn things around? I joined a support group. I opened up about my problems. Sharing that burden just took so much weight off. It's a long story from there, but I found Roller Disco. I learned how to have fun again, cutting loose and making shapes. Now whenever I get down, I get down. <laughs> down and dirty? Free from it all, man. It's important just to talk to somebody. That's the first step. Make that right, Max. Oh, oh. oh hello, Max. Oh. He's a good boy. Well, he certainly sounds like a good boy. Max is my emotional support dog. He's a rescue dog, but I always say he's the one that rescued me. He's the best dog a guy could ask for. Of course, the first thing I did was teach him how to skate better than me now, a real pro. Max can skate. Yeah, man. At first they said it couldn't be done, and then they said it shouldn't be done. But Maxie loves the rink, man. Is that another train, Maxie? Maxie loves trains, man. He's even got that special how to greet them. Uh, it sounds like you two make a great pair. Uh, Maxie appreciates all the positivity you're throwing out, my man. You know, I'm actually hosting free skating lessons tomorrow at the festival. I think it's a great opportunity to give back to the community. Man, all this talk of skating has got me itching for a boogie. Before I switch my radio off for the night, could I request a song for us? 
Something I can groove to, you know, something funky. It'll be me and Maxie's final boogie breakdown tonight. Then I think we'll take it down a little. I can do that. Thanks again for calling. You and Max, be safe now, okay? Bye, Maxie. Oh, you got it, man. Peace. Well, folks, this next one goes out to Roller Ricky and Max. Enjoy. I really needed that call, you know, after everything. Yeah, I get that. He talked a bit much for my taste, but it is inspiring to hear somebody come back from the brink like that. Yeah, th that's what I meant. <sighs> you were thinking about Max on skates, weren't you? Well, uh, would you look at that? Another caller on the line. What are the odds? Better take it. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Welcome back to 189.16. The, the Scream. Screen. This is Forrest Nash. How are you tonight, caller? I'm doing okay. I made it home safe. Gary! Hey, I, I just wanted to thank you for doing what you could earlier. You know, even though not everybody made it. And, uh, I don't know. Hey, it's okay. You were so brave earlier. You're safe now. Why what, Carrie? Why did he spare me? After what he did? Why let me go? I... Uh, so you're the victim? Maybe he didn't kill you because he saw you as a victim. Maybe. But why would that stop him from killing me too? After everything he did to... These stupid hazing nights have to stop. Carrie, you did so well tonight. Stay safe and rest. Help is coming to Gallows Creek. We just need to hold on. Thanks, Peggy. Hey, uh, Forrest? Uh, could I request a song? Of course, Carrie. What song? Any song by Blast Processor. And thank you. This next one goes out to Carrie. You know, what Carrie just said has really got me thinking. About what? The whistling man left her alone. Why? There must be a reason. When it comes to masked whistling killers... I don't I think, think I, everyone survives that. Key part of their process. Well, it's something to consider. I need to take a break. If you want... Stretch your legs, now's the time. Just hit the Peggy button when you want to get back on air. Yeah, I'll take a break. Jerks! <laughs> Let's get going, Peggy. Alrighty, we could run another segment or... Scratch that for us, we have a caller. You're through to 189.16. The Scream! What's your emergency? Hello again, Forrest. Oh, that call with the teens was awful. Those poor kids. Hey, Cat Krauss. So, um, I'm glad the girls didn't get hurt. Thanks. You love this game? Yeah, concern. it's pretty cool so far. Are you in trouble? I think I only really got one person about. killed. I, to you again to play my song, you you I, 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 I don't have it. I your don't have it. Dawn, right? I can't play. It's outside the window. Are you, uh... You must we love it. really love that song. If you're calling up to ask for it when you know we don't have it. I, I do love it. And oh. I don't want to argue, but... You do have it. It's just outside the window. There's a serial killer on the loose. I can't just go outside hunting... A game I'm right. really excited for is I'm getting really gameplay sorry, images God. and cutscenes. What game's that? What game is that? Right I don't like this. Um, he's fast. He's fast. John, I'm not sure if you've heard, but there's something unnatural about this freak. He's he's fast. I'm not risking it. Oh, but I think you will, Forrest. Peggy, I'm, I'm 
Sonic X Heroes only comes out in some days. Haven't they been? Wait, how is that? How has that been leaked? Since that's been like being announced, that's been like in the that's been like advertised since like the beginning of the year. But yeah, no, I'm excited for it as well. Sonic X Generations was amazing, and Shadow the new one's gonna be even better. Do I need to? Be right back, Peggy. Oh wait, better play some music. No. Is she serious, Peggy? She's serious about you. Ever got a review song. copy? Ah, oh, that would make sense. Sorry, Peggy, that would make sense. Serious about that would make know, sense. Forrest, but Some people would have a, really have would have a, choice, a copy we? of it already. If she's telling the truth. Yo, did that Ben just like glitch it out? All right. All right. I'll do it. You're a good man, Forrest. I'll slide you the key to the fire door. Wait, wait. Our fire door has to be unlocked. Yeah, it. Uh, you know, I never thought about it, but yeah. We should talk to Reggie about that later. Yeah, anyway, you shouldn't be able you shouldn't be unlocking a fire door. Maybe I'll even get a caller. That could be exciting. 189.16. The screw. With me, Peggy. You know, I might even stream Shadow X Generations. So what's it's meant to be the fire door key. Fire door. And one of the leakers apologized for recording someone that got a review copy and then putting it their own personal. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, people need to be careful. Like, I nearly did that when I got a review copy for Suicide Squad. Uh, a friend ended up getting two codes for Suicide Squad at the, um, earlier last year. One minute of that. Oof. I'm gonna be going. Yeah, here we go. Fire door. You know, I hope she'll be happy when I'm brutally murdered by the whistling man out here in the open. Oh, yeah, I don't like this. What's in there? That's definitely a dead body in there. Found a fuse. If I hear whistling right now, GG's. Definitely back from an ad lane. Damn, why three? Hey, hey, hey. That's not that many. Three ads is not that many. <laughs> but no, like I was saying, me and my friend got a review copy for uh, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. And um, I nearly, I nearly uh, streamed it by accident. The average is 20 seconds. No, it's not. I have my I have my ads on average. I have my Nah. Nah. I have my ad settings to the lowest it can be. Then guess Twitch is getting greedy. Yeah. I have my, I honestly generally have mine on the lowest. Plus I don't so I don't understand how how uh, it works honestly. I don't know how it honestly works. Um, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. I I'll just keep looking for fuses. That one I'm meant to be doing. Am I meant to be looking for fuses? Am I going to get brutally murdered? I'm playing Sonic Unleashed on Xenia. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sonic Un I pre I recently played that. Sonic Unleashed is an amazing game. One of my favorite Sonic games of all time. Sonic Unleashed is probably the best Sonic game ever made. My top my top three Sonic Unleashed games. Uh, Sonic Unleashed, Sonic Colors, Sonic Generations. They're my top three.
Okay, that's another one. Uh, I don't see any more fuses. Oh fuck, there's another one right here. I spent a day getting all the fastest routes when I, f and when I finally finished the level, I only got an A rank. <laughs> Did you take damage? Fair <coughs> Cancel. Um, fair enough. You got all the fastest routes, but I mean, do doesn't it um, count like how much damage you take or how many rings you collect? I'm pro I'm, I thought that's how uh. The game works. Get this. Wait. Can I open that? No, I can't. There's another one? Fucking how many fuses are there? I want to try and gather all the fuses together and figure out what kind of puzzle I'm doing. Someone walking. I try to get all the rings, get all the rings possible, but it might be because I took some damage. Ah, that gotcha. So I need everything to add up to seventy. That's twenty. Look at that, sixty. Okay, we need to take one of these out. Okay, that's fifty. That's fifty-five. Um, maybe take that one out. Also, do you know Mephiles? What's that? Mephilus? Mephiles? What, what's that? 15, so that's 50. That's 50, that's 65. What? That, that has to be 70. That's 70, right? That's, tw that's 50. 55. Ah, uh, no, that's 60. That's 60. Meth Illers. Ah, uh, no, what is that? Maybe it's this last fuse that I need. Maybe this is the last fuse I need. It's a five. Okay, maybe I need two fives in there. Maybe I take the 30 out? Okay, I got all the fuses I'm guessing. Uh, maybe take the 30 out. So now that's 35. Uh, that is now 40. 50, 60, 70, so we chuck a 30 in there. Boom. It's the most gorgeous Sonic villain ever and he's returning for Shadow G Jens after 18 years of his absence, it's fine. Did I do it? Bingo. I did it. Here it is. Long ride home. Well, it, I might play Shadow X Generations on stream. I might stream it. I'm excited for it. It's in my wish list. It's going to be such a good game. I've been waiting for such a good... I've been waiting for a good Sonic game I for a while. Probably survive that fall. Like, they did Sonic... Of course. They, it locks behind me. They, of they course did Sonic Frontiers, but that wasn't as Fantastic. good. It's not terrible, but... Maybe there's another way back in through the basement. A, a door, elevator, or something. Nothing in the... Cl nothing in the... Like the janitor's closet what did peggy say his name was clive clive fucking clive like bro's voice went from dark and mysterious to a high-pitched roger Craig <laughs> hmm. i wonder how the show's going cleaning supplies that's locked God, please let this be the last locked door. Am I meant to be... Did I miss something? Am I meant to be a key somewhere? 
Am I missing something? Dead flies. Is there a key somewhere? Oh wait. Here we go. Here we go. What's in here? What the hell? Peg yeah, what the fuck? This. What in the actual fuck nuggets is this? Ah, there's the beautiful key. Should be able to get back to the studio now. Wait, what's that? Can I pick can I pick this up as a weapon? Screwdriver. I'm taking the head of the weapon. Taking the head of the weapon. Okay, that's locked. Fuck. Great, we need another key. Um, go back here. <laughs> that was a trophy for it. <laughs> Fucking knew it. I knew it was going to be something. <laughs> yeah. That's downstairs, sorry. Um, wait, how do I get back? Key. How do I get back upstairs? Jesus. Um, here we go. Isn't that such a good song, folks? And now for... Jesus, Forrest, you've been gone for ages. I thought something had happened. Something did happen. Clive, the janitor, might be... Clive, the murderer. What? I'll start from the beginning. The, uh, the fire door locked on. I didn't even get to play the song. 240. It's 240. Why did you heave that thing all the way up here? Uh, because the basement's creepy as hell, and I don't like standing around down there. Fair. So basically, right. to give a summary of the leaks, gameplay, again. screenshots, cutscene, screenshots, cutscene, videos, 40 seconds of Mephiles, Mephilus, boss gameplay, 30 seconds of Chaos Island, Act 1 gameplay, 30 seconds of Nightmare yeah. Radical and Highway, and 41 seconds of Sunset Heights, Act 2 gameplay. Oh. I'm not going to watch the leaks. I'm just going to wait for the game to come out. I, I, want, I want a spoiler free. Clive's next target. That's right. And we've got to find them. You I want a spoiler free play when I go into Sonic, but it's the been years since I played a good Sonic station, game. The gas station, and the trailer park. Clive must think the target is at one of those locations. Forrest, you're gonna have to figure out if any of the potential targets are at one of these locations tonight. Hit the button if you need any help. Fucking um hospital. Where did that go? What is going on? Um, I beg your pardon? Number one, Chuck Brody. What am I meant to be?
What am I meant to be doing? Oh wait, number one Chuck Brody. Um... I don't know what I'm meant to be doing. Turn this fucking music down. Uh, Peggy, I need help. How's it going? Um, I could use some help. Uh, it's not going well. I could use some help. Okay, let's review the basics. We need to work out who the next target is. There's four locations, right? And four people. We need to figure out if anyone is at any of the four locations tonight. And if they are, we can call them and warn them. There must be some connections between the notes. That makes sense. Great. Need any more help? Uh, yes, please. Uh, yes, please. Sure. I think you should be methodical with this. Methodical? Try grouping the notes by who they're about. Ah, okay. You could also have a look at the dates and make a timeline. Maybe that will help rule out potential targets first. Got it. Thanks, Peggy. No problem. Um... So we got... Um... Don't know who that is. Should I just wing it? I'm just gonna wing it. I have zero clue what I need to do. How's it going? Um, I'm ready. I'm ready, Peggy. Are you sure? We've only got one shot at this. Yeah, trust me, I've got this. Let's do this. I'm sure. Let's do this. Okay. Name first. Who do you think the target is? Chuck. It's gotta be Chuck Brody. Chuck Brody. And where will I find them? Um, fuck. I actually have no idea. I think I fucked up. Um. Uh. Gas station? The gas station. Okay, I'm dialing. One moment. Oh! Chuck Brody! Listen! Oh, I did it right! I know this sounds crazy, but we have reason to believe the whistling man is coming for you. You need to get yourself and everyone else out right now. The whistling man? Who the hell are you? Who is this? This is Boris Nash. Listen! The Whistling Man's back. We found a list with your name on it, and... Oh, God. It's today. The team I finally let myself forget. I... Run. We're talking and run! I... I think he ran off. Well, fingers crossed that Chuck... Jeez! Ah! It sounds like something blew up. He's using bombs now? I... I... Is Chuck? Yeah, Chuck's fully dead. Chuck's Hang fully on. dead. We're getting a call. Chuck's fully dead. Wait, what? Hello? Chuck? Chuck! I saved Chuck. Chuck! The whole goddamn gas station's caught up. Is anyone hurt? I don't think so. I got everyone to follow me out. Town's only ambulance was blown to hell, though. Yeah. Damn it, that fireball threw me. I got to get to the hospital. I'm not feeling great. Forrest, man. I can't thank you enough, but... Yeah. I gotta go. Wait, I... Damn it. We lost him. What was that about today? Oh, Forrest, the call board is lighting up. Get us into some music while I deal with this. Here's some music while we regroup here on 
KFAM 189.16. The Scream! Can I leave here? Oh my god. What now? I'm playing music. You want me to go? There's got to be more in the basement to show us who Clive is targeting. And if that's the case, we can get ahead of him. Stop the killings before they can happen. Forrest, you need to go back. Yeah, to I'm trying to, we, but... You mean me, right? Yep. Like I said, I need to handle all these calls. Maybe start with that creepy mannequin room you mentioned before. I still have a lot Oh, of yeah, I, I, I'll do that. Way. But can this invisible too. fucking wall just disappear? Thank you, Jesus. I don't trust this. I'm gonna get jumped. I'm gonna get jumped, aren't I? Hmm. A key? Was this always here? I must have missed it when I brought everything upstairs. Here we go. Hey, Peggy, give me some warning. Fucking hell, Peggy. Sorry. Peggy, I found a tape and a map down here. A map of what? Looks like it might be to somewhere in this storage area. Sure. Well, maybe the tape will give us more information. Find the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Yeah, I'll let you know. Am I able to play this anywhere? No? Forrest, you should listen to that first tape you found. How? Oh wait, there's a thing right here. Never mind. He says I need to follow the maps and find the tapes. I guess that's what this map is about. I think we need to see what else is hidden down here. Be careful, Forrest. Keep looking. Buzz the intercom when you found something. Uh. Looks like it's not that.
This has to be important. Vinyl for my collection. Ah. If you listen to this, then I'm probably dead. What the? Found this. So is this what I needed to find? Go, go talk to Peggy. Get out of here. Hey, you're Peggy. What have you found, Forrest? It's an autopsy tape. Doesn't say for who, but I think it must be for George. Poor George. He was so young. Something's bugging me, Peggy. What do you mean? I swear I recognize the voice of the woman talking on the tape. I just can't place it. Seriously? Do you think you've met her before? I don't know. I mean, I just got here recently. I don't know. Found another tape that talks more about how George. How is that not broken? That's glass. Sounds like he was running for his life, sprinting through trees and bushes, getting cut up all over. What would drive someone to do that? I'm not sure yet. There's also a tape about a toxicology report. There were no signs of drinking or that he was on anything. I found a written autopsy report. What does it say? According to that, it's just like you said at the start. George drowned after getting drunk. Said he liked to fight, too. But that contradicts the tape. I know. And I think I know why. There's a note with the report that says, I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. If it was on the autopsy report, then Virginia must be our coroner. Wait, the caller from earlier. When we had to call the takeout restaurant, Virginia? We need to call her back once we finish down here. It looks like she might know something about what's going on. I found a tape that introduces a new detail to the story. Post-mortem injury. Apparently, his arm got caught in a car door. A car door? Yeah, after he died. How do you suppose they can tell? How can they tell? I'm a radio producer, not a coroner. In another tape, the coroner comes to the same conclusion as I do. George was running from something. Maybe an animal? Maybe, but then there's this next bit, where the coroner thinks he was moved post-death. Moved the body? How weird. At the end of the tape, someone burst in and demanded Virginia stop recording. I, I think it was Clive. This is starting to make sense. I, um, I think I found Clive's last recording. I think Clive might be gone. Gone? I found a confession. Not for any killings, but for playing a part in covering up George's death. He left this behind in case he died. He hoped someone would find it. You... Do you think the whistling man already got him? Oh, is that Possibly. the dude we're playing at the beginning of the game? With Janitor? Of callers tonight, but... Maybe not every victim made it to the phone, you know? We don't know how many there really are. That is true. That is that's true. But Clive said he had read about other murders in other towns, and that the murders were all folks who knew about the incident. And the killings were getting closer to Gallows Creek. He said he wanted to do something good for once. The board in his office. He said his employer threatened his family if he spoke out about any of it. His employer? The one who orchestrated the cover? Oh, God. Sorry for thinking you killed all those people. Do you think you found everything? <sighs> I think so. Forrest, what's going on here? Someone wanted that boy's death to seem like an accident. And they hired Clive to make it look that way. 
upstairs when you're ready. We need to figure out our next step. Three o'clock. Thank God you're back, Forrest. I've been running out of stuff to pad our airtime with. Peggy, you work in radio. Forrest, I'm stressed. I mean, really. How are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? This is our job, Peggy. We, we got to do it. Yeah, we got to do it. You're right. Like how so, I just got to keep doing what's this. What's the plan now? I think we should call Virginia back. All right, I'll get her on the line. Time to turn the music off. Hello again, Gallows Creek. This is Forrest Nash. We're circling closer to the truth behind tonight's events. To this end, we're calling back one of our earlier callers, Virginia Sullivan. No, uh, it's Forrest. Banker. Hey, it's the Radio Man, Forrest Nash. Radio Man? What's up? Solving mysteries, saving lives. The huge. Right, 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 right on. Flunker, what are you doing at Virginia's house? She asked if we could stay to keep an eye out for that whistling turd. So we're hanging out, bro. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's big of you, Flunker. Can I speak to Virginia? Sure thing, radio man. I'll just go get her. Who is this? Hey, Virginia, it's Forrest. I'm I'm glad you're still okay. Oh. Forrest. Sorry, I'm still jumpy. Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. You've been through a lot. I'm so sorry this happened to you, Virginia. Easy. We're not calling to talk about earlier. We're calling because we think you can help us understand why this is happening tonight. Me? What would I know? Uh, Clive. Does the name Clive mean anything to you? Clive? No. I don't know that name. What are you asking about this for? You mentioned that name earlier when you called us the first time. Clive's the janitor at our station, and we know you spoke to him in the past. Forrest, please. You don't know what you're doing. He'll come for me. Virginia, it's okay. He's already been Clive after you. Clive won't be coming after you. We think Clive's dead. Dead? But isn't he? He's the whistling man, Forrest. We found evidence to the contrary. But it's true. And... We found your autopsy reports for George Barrow. How? I saw him destroy them. Well, he didn't. I don't know if he kept them or made copies or what, but we found them. And we know it's related to what's happening tonight, which is why we yeah. called you. Why did you write a false report? I... All right. One day, I came into work to find a... a boy on my slab. Finished the autopsy. This man, Clive, he just burst in and he started making demands to give over the reports, to falsify what I found. Of course, I said no, but well, when someone wants to make you do something, they can use the carrot or the stick. For me, he used both. You see, my sister is sick. She has a chronic condition that's never going away. Well, it's the condition to treat, and it was getting to where I couldn't afford it. And Clive promised me that his employer would pay for my sister's treatment if I did what he said, and that if I ever spoke about this, he'd beat me to within an inch of my life. Hey, at least he didn't say he would kill you. 
sister needed me. You have to understand. She needed me. We understand. Thank you, Virginia. That was brave. God, I just want this nightmare to end. This will help end it, Virginia. Thank you. Stay safe, Virginia. What now, Peggy? So, Virginia is tied up in all of this. Clive threatened her to keep quiet about George's death. But for who? Why cover up these details? We could try Sandra. Me. What would Sandra know? I don't know, but we have to start somewhere. Anyway, just be careful when you're talking to her. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. I'll be careful. All right, calling her now. Hopefully she's at her jazz studio. Aha, Forrest, you're through. Hello, this is Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. Who is this? <laughs> Hello again, Sandra. It's Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Stream. And you're live on air. <laughs> oh, I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. How jazzy. What can I do How for jazzy. you? How uh, jazzy. Well... <laughs> We're trying to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. We had a few questions. Why, Forrest, of course. Heck, after the way you saved my life, I'd say yes to just about anything you asked. Smash with me. Okay, um... That feels nice. Really? Well, that sounds nice. I might just call you back tomorrow then, too. Ah, uh, you got my number. But what about tonight? Remember why we called, Forrest? Of course. Do you know why the Whistling Man might have targeted you? Ha! Far as I can tell, he was just a knife-wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. Superhuman cardio? <laughs> Damn. Right. Well, we think he might be chasing specific people. People who know about the death of a boy named George. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. Are you keeping secrets? Hmm. Have you had to keep quiet about anything? Any secrets you've had to keep? What would I have to keep quiet about? I don't know. I mean, could be that you've seen something or heard something. I never saw anything. Even if I did, what would that matter? And, and it was years ago. Yeah. Uh, you okay? Sandra, are you okay? It was years ago. We know, Sandra. You do? Yes, of course. This studio is my life. After I found the body in the river, I couldn't lose She the found studio. George's you body. Understand? Sure, I understand. When the rent just kept going up, he said he'd stop if I just needed to keep quiet. And everything would be okay. Of course, we understand. Um, I'm sorry. I wouldn't I say that. Miss. And she's gone. I don't think that could have gone any better. You truly did great, Forrest. Well, folks, if anyone out there has any thoughts on what's going on tonight, please call in. That's good timing. We've got a call waiting just this second. Welcome to 189.16 The Scream with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Hi, Boris. I know this is really out of the blue. Dracula? I swear if it's Ponty. If you could send a special birthday message to my uncle. You know what? I'd welcome a change of pace. I'd be glad to. Thank you, Boris. He's my uncle Ronnie. His first name's Peter, but he never liked his name. But since he always had salt and pepper hair. It's Ponty. It's Ponty Pizza. Folks, I can smell the pizza breath better. on him. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday you'd like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my god damn it! Yes! Tell him <laughs> he can get the best birthday deals and party packages here at Ponty's Pizza. Start a jump. You son of a bitch! Stop calling! <laughs> Sorry, Forrest. Let's just move on. We've already got another caller on the line. 
This is 189.16, The Scream. I'm Forrest Nash. You're on the air, caller. I swear if this is Ponty again. Caller. I swear if this is Ponty again. <sighs> Ponty. I reckon he's the killer. Forrest? I reckon he's the killer. Are you okay? Yeah, he's the killer. <sighs> Forrest? I hope the whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus, Forrest? Sorry, sorry, that was... That was too much. It's okay. It's been a high-stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. We've got another call, whenever you're ready. Folks, don't spend your money at Pawnee's Pizza. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16, The Scream, with me, Forrest Nash. Who may I say is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Dawn? Dawn, Dawn? We played your song, Long Ride Home. Did you hear it? Can you tell us? I uh, never mind that now. Of course, I'm calling because I need your help. Are you in danger? Oh, I sure am. Do you mean... Yes, he's after me now. You? I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. Oh. Helping? You didn't exactly help. Maybe I've been helping more than you know. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next, after Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. Ah, GG's. Dawn's next. Newfangled security system has me locked out. I need you to help me get inside. Uh... Can a neighbor let you in? Oh, I only moved in last week. I don't know anybody yet. There's not even a buzzer here, only the, the keypad for the entry code. I need that code to get inside. Which apartment block do you live in? Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the new Woodside apartment Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. So really she lives. D for Dawn. She lives. Shit. Sounds like a noisy part of town. It is. Boy, I wish he muzzled that thing in. Oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. <laughs> Yeah, she lives here. Dawn lives there. Uh... What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says... Starling Security 4000. There's a keypad, and it looks like it wants a, a six-digit number. We'll see what we can do. Thank you, Forrest. Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. I saw that in the basement for right, a safe folks. code. Here's a little tune for you all to enjoy. Well, I try to break Dawn into her apartment. You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Forrest, was it just me, or was there something... Yeah, it wasn't just you. Something was weird about that. Yeah. Well, tell you what. We have a Starling 4000, or whatever, here at KFAM. What if Dawn's the killer? One for the station. Wait, I never thought, thought Dawn might be a killer. Help. Well, I'm not sure who. But to help someone...
Okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments, and somewhere, Clive probably has the papers for the Starlink 4000. Yeah, basement. I don't like this. Just don't look behind you. Simple. Just don't look behind you. Um, where was it? This thing. Starling 4000. User manual. Ah, these codes should come in handy. I think there's only one door we can't unlock yet. That's this door. Locked for now. And that door, and that door. Wait. Yeah, these doors we can't open. Um. Okay, Peggy. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starling 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? Nothing, except the manual. All right. Well, I'll get Dom back on the line then, Forrest. I'll let you take it from here. Thanks, Peggy. When you're ready, shut the music off. Line one, whenever you're ready. Don, are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Stream. Oh, thank God you're back. What's the code to the game? So, if we go with the theory that Dawn's the whistling man, If we go up by that, she's the whistling man. I set off the alarms. Just in case. The code is 191519. Thank you, Forrest. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I was right. That's so sus. <laughs> gotcha. Is she? Did someone just shoot? So she was all the way here. Ricky, get back inside and turn on the radio. Whoever that was, she was trying to break into the ring. She? Forrest, man, you got no idea. That was him. That was the whistling man. The alarm gave me just enough time to get my rifle. In. I don't like hurting folks, but I can't let anything happen to Maxie. He's my best friend, you know? I... Listen, man, I'm heading back inside. Oh, uh, wait, I should have known that from the beginning. Man, dog barking. Hey, Ricky had a dog. He liked free. a certain song. Thanks, Ricky. Can't wait. Got it. Talk to you soon. Okay, Gallows Creek. Here's some music while we process what just happened. Is 
So the whistling man is a woman? Yep. I know. I, I can't believe it. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. I do see the whistling man when I was outside, though. I knew she wasn't right. Is that right, Sherlock? Well, Why yeah. do you think she requested that song? To get me outside? Maybe, but how? She didn't know the song was outside to start with. That's right. She never actually attacked me out there. So? What now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. Okay, you're live in three, two... Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. We now believe the killer is actually a woman, one who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you. We're neighbors. Look out for each other and stay safe. The killer was calling themselves Don. This could be a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. Yeah, call in so we can you save lives. You have my new number, right? It's 911. Hopefully, our next caller can help shed some light on our killer. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks, time to take a call. You're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16. The Scream. Hey, man. Murphy? Murphy. Damn straight. What's going Damn on, Murphy? straight. in danger again? No, nah, man. I've just been listening to the show here at home. And since you asked folks to call in if they could help out, well, I've got it. I don't know if I can say as much as other folks have, but uh, I figure... I wouldn't be a good role model to Fernando if I didn't try to help, you know? We really appreciate that. A hundred percent. Thank you, Murphy. Oh, thanks. So, uh, what do you want to know? Well, what can you tell us? Uh, I don't know, really. All right. Well, do you know anything about the death of George Barrow? Absolutely nothing. Okay. What about the killer herself? Herself? Man, I, I didn't get my ass kicked by a lady. But now I went toe to toe, it was a man, man. You heard the last call, right, Murphy? Yep. So you know it's a woman, and you were trained by a VHS, Murphy. I, I know, but. Man, how could it have been a woman under that mask? Let's yeah, start, Murphy, you, you, you know got your ass beat by a girl. The history of the whistling man. No, sir. Tonight's the first time I ever heard of him. What? I moved here three years ago, man. What do you want from me? Hey, man, no worries. Just thank you for trying. Right. Sorry I couldn't help you all more, man. You didn't now, help me with anything. Me about games. Forrest, we have a call. He back. definitely lives in Florida. He lived in Florida. I think that's all we've got time for right now. All right, all right. I'll catch y'all with the gator talk later. Oh, shut up, Murphy. Now, well, folks, that was a bust. But perhaps our next caller... <laughs> that was a bust like, like me. Us. Let's find out. This is Forrest Nash, and you're listening... Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. Casey, you're dead. I'm 25 Nancy Drive. It's my best friend's been... 25... Uh, breathe. Is he still breathing? Is he still breathing? Yeah, but, but he's bleeding out fast. I really need help. Please. Take a breath. We've been out at the reservoir. We were heading back to his place. So we heard this whistling all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, he's cooked. He started freaking out. Your friend got murked. He told me to hide. I'd never seen him like that. And I, I just panicked and ran and hid in the bush. Oh, no. Forrest. Then what happened? Casey, was his attacker the whistling man? The who? They had a mask and wore all black? That's all I know. Please, we need help here. A 
I'll get you help, but I need to know. Where did the masked person go? They left! They left him to bleed out! I waited till they were gone. Okay. Then dragged him into the garage and called 911. Okay. Why didn't she make sure he was dead? I don't know. It's a, it's a trap. I heard them say something like, It's not so funny now, is it? Before they left, but... Please! It was a trap. He needs to get to the hospital. Uh... I can't drive, so we need an ambulance. Forrest, <laughs> Why did you say ambulance for that? We need an ambulance. Station. You should get all the info you can. Uh, what's your friend's what's name? What's your friend's name, Casey? Jason! Can you tell us where Jason was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach. Oh, yeah, he's dead. The GG's, he's, he's, he's dead. He he's gonna go under shock soon, so. Oh, the mask is still there in his leg. Oh, right don't there. touch it. Patches through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. <clears throat> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh, God, I'm sorry. But the ambulance is... Well, you know. Yeah, I know. destroyed. Please, we need something or he's going to die. Forrest, I... Listen. Yeah, GG, he's dead. Going to to <laughs> he's gonna die. We need to see him and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first and then finding someone to stabilize him. Stabilize him. You really need someone with first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. No. Nah. Uh, damn it. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can, and then leave the rest to you. Do you think you can handle that? Uh, we can handle it. I'm sure we can handle it. Okay. From the top. Okay. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Okay. Lay him down. Okay. I can pressure directly to the affected area. Okay. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wound. Rubbing get alcohol. Comfortable. Apply pressure. Peggy, shut up and let her finish. When slowed. Got it. I think. You said he was stabbed, right? Yeah, right in the gut. The object he was stabbed with is still in him. Don't take it out. It's stopping the worst of the bleeding right now. Okay, so don't take the knife, knife out of him. Stays where it is. I wouldn't have thought of that. It makes sense, though. Yeah, obviously, because the knife's in his go. leg. The moment but we take it out, it's just going to be blood bursting out of his leg. Because there's more to go. Uh, keep going. I'm, I, I'm understanding all this. What Trust me. To know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. Yeah, yeah, I see you caught it. Act fast. You're going to put his legs over if his head. Apply the cloth and it's bleeding through. Don't remove it. Just apply another on top of it. Okay. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating to vital organs. Try to keep him warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. <sighs> All right. Uh, don't replace bandages. Elevate his legs. Keep him warm and calm. This is a lot. I'm really sorry. That's as much as I can give you right now. Try to stop the bleeding. Find someone to get him stabilized and get him healed. Yeah, we're cooked. As as you can. Yeah, we're cooked. Good luck. All so, right, where was the... Casey's still on line one. Hello? 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 So, Casey's... How's Jason? I'm here. How is Jason doing? Badly. He's still bleeding. Obviously. Help. I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. But he's still bleeding. I don't know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about the knife in his leg? Don't take it out. It's gonna be hell. Should I pull it out? Oh, hell no. Nah. No, don't touch the knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you sure? I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop making some yeah, no, shut up and listen to me. We're a team. I'm a trained doctor. We're all going to get Jason through this. So where is she? She. Is his leg wound bleeding right now? I hate looking at that knife. Yeah, yeah, it's bleeding. His stomach is worse though. Uh, leave the knife alone. Oh, actually, no. Mm. No, we need to secure. I think we need to secure the knife so it doesn't move around. Stab it in more. It. Stab it in more. Uh, yeah. There's some laundry piled up on top of the dryer. The cloth's on the hood of the car. And what else? Uh, I guess I've got my jacket. Okay. Use the cleaning rags. 
Take the cleaning rags and hold them over the wound. I really hope these are clean. Here we go. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry, Jason. <laughs> Good. Nah, I don't trust. I have a word? Are you okay? Casey, I'm gonna have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on and let us know when the bleeding is under control. And where did she say she was? Great. But what if something happens? We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything and we'll be there. I promise. Okay. I'll wait. Jason, please be okay. Yeah, Peggy, he's not making it, Peggy. He's done for. Peggy, she. Oh, up, fuck! Peggy? I'm still on. I'm st I'm still on the phone. All night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? You're right. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. Exactly. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. Any suggestions? Any suggestions, Peggy? I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. So you know it's first aid! It because we were away oh. on a producer Oh, getaway. of course you missed it, you dumb it. bitch. Right. Fucking. Never mind. So, how does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah? Why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses Nancy, 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 Nancy. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think Casey is... Casey and Jason? Probably. Around here somewhere. There. They're around there somewhere. Day, I don't know who knows first aid. Could you call them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. Of course you don't. I've only ever called Karen. Everybody's oh, personal Karen. info is probably in Reggie's office. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. It's a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. Right. But there are a couple of problems with that. What? What problems? Go on. Go on. It's sensitive information. So Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Great. 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 Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Okay, no, Kobe. Kobe! Reggie's a serial note taker, though. Maybe something in his office will give it away. Fuck. Right. There is something else. I'm not gonna like this, am I? Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? Peggy, what the hell are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, what the f- I'm talking about floppy disks. Floppy disks are like these futuristic things that have information on them. You put them in a computer. Are you stupid? And do something. In 2024, I mean, I floppy disks. Anyway, the future. Reggie decided that the future is floppy, and started phasing out our physical records and replacing them with these floppy disks. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. That's good to know. So okay, you trying? You trying to tell me? Casey, We're probably in like 20. I don't know when this game came out, but I'm guessing. See what I can find. Two you years ago, you're saying I'll it's like it's like in the we're in the twenty first century, and you're saying we're, we're we'll floppy disks. What? Dumb bitch. Damn. Damn. Okay, big. Yeah. Wait. Wait. Get that. Get that. Okay. 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 Uh, Reggie's office. Where's the, where, where, where's his office? Has to be. It's got to be down here somewhere then, right? Maybe it's one of the doors that we haven't. Ah, here we go. Looks like I need <gasps> a four-digit code. Oh, you can't place the metal nuts. You can both these though. Four-digit code. Oh. Ah. Fuck. Clive, if you're reading this, stop stealing my post-it notes. Ask Jenny where those tapes are at. It's overdue. Okay, there's got to be something. Found something. Some this. Something. I got a Fallout computer. Could this be it? Where's the safe? Vin, very important date. Okay, what, what would be an important bet? Pizza delivery killer takes place. 
She smelled beautiful. Okay. Um. Maybe. One one oh seven. That's not it. One one oh seven. Nice. Who did she say that? This one. How do you... Did I do a door move? Hello? Not that one. Um, Barber. It's gotta be Barber, right? Fuck. Yay. Get in, get in there. Uh. Fucking. Hey, Peggy. You there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? I got the safe open, but I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be looking for in these files. We need to know who can do first aid, and we need them to be close to Nancy Drive. Anything further away than a street or two is probably too far. Anyone who ticks those two boxes is our best bet. Got it. I'll take another look at the files. I'll let you know when I find something, or don't. 14 Nancy Drive! Peggy, I found him. Hey, Peggy. His name's John. Yeah. John Marston. Yeah, John Marston. I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. All right, good work. Who should I... Hello? Is anybody there? Oh, Please no. Casey, I'm here. What's wrong? Jason started going pale. I tried to give him a rest, but he just threw up. He's going in the shock. What's happening? What do I do? God, it sounds like he's going into shock. Casey, got to elevate his legs. So you got to push his legs so far back to where he's like... You know? Jason, I'm sorry. Casey, calm down. You've done To where he's like eating his own banana. I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Casey, I need you to elevate Jason's legs. We need to get the blood flowing to his vital organs. Yeah, GG's. Should I get a new one? Or... Oh, God. Uh, apply additional bandage. Don't remove the bandage. Apply another one on top of it. Do you still have something you can use? I've used the rest of the laundry to keep them warm, so... I'll use my jacket. I can always get a new one. I'll fix the bandage and get them warm. Hold on, please. Uh, be strong for Jason. Casey, I need you to be strong for Jason. Sit with him and reassure him that everything's gonna be okay. Okay? Okay. Yeah, he's gonna die. You said you knew who to call earlier? Yeah, his name's John Marston. We need to call John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. He didn't really participate in the first aid training, but he's a former war medic. He's probably the most trained person we have. Really? I never really spoke to him before. Oh, war medic. Yeah, and according to Reggie's notes,
John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. All right. What's his number? Uh, five four two zero seven three five. That's a short number. John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We have an emergency and we need your help. Forrest, if this is a work emergency, then I can wait until the goddamn morning. Just leave me a note like everybody else. A man has been stabbed by the whistling man, or never mind. He's lost a lot of blood and he's passed out. We need you to help him. The whistling man? What kind of joke? It's not a joke! John, we're not kidding. A man is gonna die if we don't help him right now. He's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. You say he was stabbed? Do you know the extent of his injuries? From what we were told, he has two major stab wounds. One to the stomach and one to the leg. The knife is still in his leg and the stomach wound is open. Understood. Let me grab a few supplies and I'll head right over. Be damned if he dies on my watch. Thank you, John. We'll let him know you're on your way. Hello, Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? How is he what now? About now? Is he still thrashing? He's yeah, he's dead. Yeah, I think Casey he's dead. On the way. I'm sorry to I say this, Casey, but he so. may be dead. You hear that, Jason? He may be dead. He may Come be on. dead. I'm guessing that's Jason there. Casey, I'm gonna need your help. Forrest, Peggy, don't you two worry. We've got this from here. Okay. Oh, W. John Marston. The show moves on. We're sending our best wishes to Jason. Oh well, my god. After all that excitement, I think we could use some music. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. Oh, oh yeah, yep, yeah, there we go. That's the wrong door. We've got to be approaching the end of the game now. It's, it's, I've been streaming for nearly four hours. It's getting pretty late. This might be your last break for the night, so try to enjoy it. Give me a buzz when you want to go back on air. Let's roll. You got it. We've got another call coming through, too. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Welcome back to 189.16, the, the scream. scream. I believe we have another caller on the line. How are you tonight, caller? Lawrence, it's me, Roller Ricky. Oh, oh and Maxie's oh. here too. Good to hear from you again. How are you both doing? Oh, we're good, man, thanks to you. You're like our guardian angel. That wouldn't be a bad look for you, Forrest. A little white wing halo number. Maybe something for the K-Fan Halloween party. All right, everyone, let's calm down. Ricky, I'm just glad we could help you and Maxie. Is there anything else we can help you with, Ricky? Actually, I think I have some info that might help you. Okay, really? Oh, what's that? See, man, uh, me and Jason know each other. You know each other? Yeah, we went to Gallus High and played on the football team together. He was a gnarly offensive linesman, and I was our star wide receiver. All right, and what is that? You're not on this thing, though. Well, because George... Oh, class well, we must be in the 80s, then. Colossal 69. He was on our team, too. Tell me about him. What was George like? I didn't know him for long, man. Sad to say. We had our first team party on the night he drowned. He seemed like such a good dude. Ricky, were you there when George drowned? No, man. Once the party turned, I beat out of there. Man, I remember George and his girl there. There was a whole lot of love, man. I could see it, you know? What was her name? Ricky, please. 
What was her name? I never got her name, man. It has to be Dawn. I didn't really know her before. Or it's got to be Dawn. Then what did she look like? Please tell us anything you remember. I just remember a pretty girl, man. I'm sorry. Ricky, you said the party didn't last long. What happened? We were just having a good time, and then the next thing I knew, everyone was running for their life. I looked up and saw the goddamn whistling man in the trees. And, and I never ran so fast in my life. I ran straight home. Didn't know about George until the next morning at school. I'm guessing it was whistling night, wasn't it? That the whistling man was just another kid. Yeah. I don't know how George died, but I, I always felt like if anyone deserved to die that night, it should have been me. And it wasn't Rick, your fault. It wasn't your fault. You're not a bad person. I know that now, ma'am. Took a long time to learn, but yeah, just thought I'd tell you all what I know. Thank you, Ricky. This helps. Thank you. You got it, man. Anyway, I think it's time for me and Max to free up your phone lines. Thanks for listening, man. Oh, like good. Oh, good, Ricky. Night, Ricky. All right, folks. Looks like we got a new lead in the case. If anyone has any info about this mysterious bean. Please call in. If she was George's girlfriend back then, she's probably in her mid to late thirties now. Huh. Oh, we have another call coming in. But hang on. What's up, Peggy? Uh Peggy? Peggy? Peggy. Peggy. You're gonna wanna take this call off the air. Who is it? Just do it. All right, folks, it's time for another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. We'll be right back after this. Uh, I hope this is good news, Peggy. Who have we got? Find out for yourself on line one. Hello? Forrest. Oh, it's Leslie. Glad I got back through to you. Yay. Been a busy night, huh? Surprise, it's Leslie, our 911 operator, leading the charge from Henderson to come save us. It's so good to hear from you. Are you okay? We're doing okay. Sarah and I are both happy to be headed back home. We're happy to have you too. I... Wait, Sarah? Oh, yeah, I mean Deputy Martinez. Uh, anyway, we got back into radio range a little while ago. We've been listening in, but haven't been able to get through until now. Only a few people have died. It's been non-stop since you left. Please tell us you're bringing help. You bet. I'm That's bullshit. Goddamn squad towards Gallows Creek as we speak. Turns out somebody had cut the phone line. They had no idea what was happening. That's great news. That's crazy about the phone lines, though. Do you think the whistling man cut them? I'm guessing so. I don't know how he, how she, how the whistling man did it. But that doesn't matter right now. Listen, we're coming in hot, but we need your help. I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town, but if we don't know where the whistling man is, we can't get him. Her. That's where you come in. You can count on us. What do you need? It might be a long shot, but here goes. The whistling man already called up a few times. I bet she calls again. We're still a little ways out of town, so if she calls, stall her. Buy as much time as you can for us to get in. And while you're talking to her, try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in. So once her location is known, we'll head straight there and end this nightmare. I'll do my best. I know you will. Heck, I can see the headlines now. Forrest Nash's interview of a lifetime. Anyway, I'll radio the other cars and tell them the plan is a go. Hopefully the next time I see you, it'll be with our killer behind bars. Take care. We'll see you soon, Leslie. Oh, thank God. It sounds like this is almost over. We're nearly through this. Best we don't waste any time, then. Let's get back on air. You got it. 
When you're ready, shut the music off. Okay. Bringing you back live now. Welcome back to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. The line is lit up, but before I get to our next caller, I just want to say things are looking up. It's almost over, but for now, let's bring in our next caller. Do I know where to click this? Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. I'm here with Casey. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. John! Is, is he going to be okay? He's a fighter. He'll be fine. Nice. He's stabilized and resting in bed. W. John. Move him to the hospital. Thank you so much. If you hadn't been there, then... God, I don't even want to think about what would have happened. Of course, Casey. We're just happy he's okay. John, Casey, you two did all the work. Tell Jason to get well soon from us, whatever he's up for. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? This forest. Hey, Jason. The one and only. The one and only. I hope you're feeling better. It's good to hear you, Jason. How are you? Oh, well, you know, I've got a hole in my stomach, and there's a knife in my leg, but John gave me something to take the edge off. Whiskey. So, I might feel even better than either of you. <laughs> Take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. I will. But, uh, before that, I, I needed to call you. I'm guessing the whistling man is still out there? Yeah. Yep. As far as we know, anyway. I was worried you'd say that. God damn it. Actually, I'm glad you called. I wanted to talk to you about what happened earlier. Go for it. We spoke to Roller Ricky not long after you were attacked. You spoke to Ricky? Was he... Is he alright? He is now. I mean, he was attacked earlier, but this call came after. Hey, guys, I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right back. Sure, Peggy. Sorry, Jason. Uh, where was I? Ah, yep. Ricky's fine. You don't need to worry about him. That's a relief. He told us about George. Sounds like everything's finally coming out now. It's been tough to hold it all in. Sounds like you've been holding back about something awful, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. And the few who knew about it said if I ever said anything. I'd find myself in jail for a long time. It was hell. Why? And then the town just moved on. Like it never existed. What happened that night? I went along with this st stupid prank, that's what. Whistling night. Some of the guys on the football team had an idea for a way we could haze the newcomers. Decided to and a party in the woods. Have the whistling man crash it. It was stupid. We each had a role. I was the stabbed friend. The party that night, I left the group for a second. Met our whistling man. Pretended to get stabbed in front of everyone. Started an almighty panic. Those screams. That was the last time I saw or heard George alive. How did George die, Jason? I don't know. I was playing dead. But when I heard her scream... Ricky mentioned a girl named Bean. Is that who you mean? Bean? Oh, yeah. I guess George did call her that. Yeah. What was her actual name? He called her. Dawn. Her name was... What? What happened? Are we still on air? Oh, gee, geez. He's coming after us now. Oh, shit. How do we get it back on? Oh, you can use the you want me to go to the basement? You're cooked. Oh. An emergency broadcast? I think I've seen it. You might have spotted it earlier when you were digging around for those tapes. It'll have a big red button. Just press that. 
Okay. Got this. Far back corner. Why is this station so big? Fuck I need a wrench. I found it, but I, I think I need that wrench. Or screwdriver, maybe? It's gotta be, it's gotta be this thing, right? Maybe not. That oh. must be it. Oh, oh there we go. Got power. Oh, I'm cooked. The whistling man. I need to warn Peggy. I'm cooked. Oh, I'm going to get stabbed. Oh, I'm going to get fucking murked. Oh, he's going to be waiting for me. He's going to be waiting for me some way, isn't he? What the hell? Um, why is Peggy's door open? Oh, oh no. Peggy's cooked. Peggy, where'd you go? No way. This can't be happening. A, a call. What am I meant to do here? Oh, here we go. Where's Peggy? Where's Peggy gone? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show. But it's not over just yet. We've got a little time still. So let's make the most of it. Uh. All right. All right. Let's. That's not, that's not Dawn. Let me go. Welcome to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. That's not right. Dawn. It's all gonna come out tonight, Teddy. Your daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. Wait, is that Peggy in front of me? Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. Oh, great. But you're here. I can see you. You're standing right in front of me. Oh, I get it. You're wondering who's there at the station. Yes. Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallant's Creek to my boy, Henry Barrow. Your son? Your son? You mean you... Wait, did, did he? Yes, Forrest. He and I had a son. So there were two whistling men here. Ah, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I was like, it's like Scream. I was always able to get around town so quickly. And that's how you escaped the secret archives in the newspaper office. Don't think I've forgotten about that, Forrest. Locking my sweet boy away like an animal. And Murphy, he, he was right, wasn't he? He did fight a man. I did. I taught my boy to never run away from a fight. Hang on. Did you say Barrel? That are you? Let me just get this mask off. 
Dawn's Bane. So, not Don, huh? No, not Don. What are you going to... Uh, uh. Everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. He killed George that night. This night. 20 years ago. Listen to me. You... Uh. You're gonna talk when I talk to you. Are they... Is she spanking him? Meanwhile, Forrest, I'm gonna give you the chance to talk. Okay. Okay, I'll do it. Okay, Marie. I'll do it. Good. Then let's talk about the night George was murdered. Murdered? Uh, listen, I... He's gonna get spanked again. <laughs> Damn. I said you speak when you're spoken to. <sighs> now, I know you've done some good work tonight in piecing together what happened to George 20 years ago. And that's why I want you to interview us. I can do that. Interview you. All right. I can do that. Thank you. I want you to help me and Teddy tell the story, Forrest. Do a good job. And hell, you might be the only one to leave here alive. <laughs> yeah, Teddy's cooked either way, I think. I need to drag this out. Yeah, okay. I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek. Yeah, okay. And if I can find out where Marie is... Then this can end. Teddy, we'll start with you. Just, uh, talk me through what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? It was 20 years ago. Be honest, Teddy. Teddy, be honest with me or we're both going to die. Honest? Forrest, I'm trapped here with a psycho. Oh, so am I. <laughs> Whistling night, I right? That kids in Gallows Creek know tonight as Whistling Night. I'm guessing that's what you mean. Well, we didn't have a name for it then. It was just a night that Mooney went missing. But Whistling Night is what they call it later. Wait. You mean this was the first Whistling Night? I. Uh. Keep talking, Teddy. We went up near Whistling Point. Uh. God. Jason and George, of course, uh, but George didn't come alone. He brought Marie. And Roller Ricky, he was there too, wasn't he? Yes, Ricky was there too. Runner Ricky, our wide receiver. I helped him off the bottle, you know, because I'm a decent man. Is that so? Yes, it is. He came apart one day. Some people do. He had some issues. Wasn't stable. I didn't want him to hurt his chances in life. So I helped him keep himself together. Yeah. You were afraid he would talk about that night, weren't you? Keep talking. About midway through the night, we put the prank into action. We looked up at the tree. Jason there, bloody, like, he'd just been stabbed, and the whistling man, <laughs> screaming, George and I, and Ricky, we got left behind, but Ricky was in on it too, I know he was, he and Teddy were as close as anybody, Teddy must have told him the plan. Did you ask Ricky? Did you ask Ricky if he knew or not? I didn't see any reason to. Why? Because Ricky phoned up earlier. He didn't know anything about it, Marie. What? He had no idea what was happening. 
He said he was as terrified as anybody. Isn't that right, Teddy? You didn't tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. If we told him, he would have given everything away. But he... well... <sighs> it doesn't matter. He didn't run his mouth enough to tell anybody about it afterwards. He's still guilty. It was just a stupid prank. Just a prank? How can you still say it was just a prank? Oh, come on! I... God damn it! You mean to... That goes as Joel. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Jason's still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. We talked her through how to stop the bleeding and got him professional help just in time. Oh. Well, shame he didn't have the good sense to die earlier. He's gonna regret that. Enough about him. Me and George took off running. Somehow we got separated in the woods. I ended up near the bottom of Whistling Point. And when I noticed George wasn't with me, I panicked. And then, I don't know how he snuck up on me, but the Whistling Man grabs me. I scream, and he starts laughing. Telling me it's, it's just a joke. I can stall for time here. How did you feel? How did you feel in that moment? I feel Who was under the mask? Who was under the mask, Murray? Who was the whistling man? It was Chuck. Chuck Brody. Ah. Laughing away. But then he stops. And he's looking up at the top of Whistling Point. What was he looking at? <laughs> Teddy. What happened next? Nothing. It was just Teddy. George fell off Whistling Point. How do you know that? How do you know what happened? I saw it. You pushed him. You were up there. You were dressed as the Whistling Man, too, and... I didn't push him, God damn it! I just chased him up there, and he kept backing up. When I saw he was about to go over, I reached out. That's what you saw. You liar. It's not my fault. He didn't know it was a joke. If he'd had any brains, he would have realized. Wow. You bitch. No one's going to believe this. After all you did. And why the cover-up? If she's lying, why the cover-up? My future was at stake, Ash. You know what it's like. People like us are bred for bigger things. I'm going to be the mayor of this town. No, you're not. And then governor. And then, who knows? What happened that night was tragic. It should never have happened. But it was a mistake. It was just a Damn, stupid I'm tired. joke. Gone wrong. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Ah. I should have let my future. He wasn't a blip, you dumb was a bitch. Blip? He wasn't a blip, Murray. His father covered it up from there. I searched for George's body all night. <laughs> Sandra found him the next morning while out jazz running. She found him in the river, but she lied about that to protect Teddy. She said something about her rent going up, unless she... Teddy, did your father own Sandra Sharp's dance studio? It's Gallows Creek, not Sharp Creek. I'd answer the question if I were you, Teddy. Yes, okay. We own the most of the town. That's it, then. Your father was going to run her out of business unless she lied and said she found him in the reservoir instead of the river. What my father did in his business dealings is nothing to do with me. The false reports. 
That's why you killed Sheriff Matthews, too, isn't it, Maria? Not just to get him out of the way, but... Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. Said George was drinking. That he just got himself into trouble. And... Fake report? I only heard the tapes. You'd be disgusted by it. For all it's worth, Virginia didn't have much of a choice. She had a sick sister whose treatments she couldn't afford. She played along with the gallows to save her sister's life. And her own. Even... even still, she should have told the truth. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the newspaper, but no. That coward killed the story. We'll take care of Maurice Russell later. You've been through hell. You've been through hell, Marie. I'm sorry. You've got no idea. Oh, damn. He shouldn't have pushed my door to us. He should have been punished. But it's coming to a stop. At least for now. Here. Our George and I first met before he joined the football team. Well, right after he shot the winning throw. Wait a sec. Huh? We're at Gallows Creek High. In the gymnasium. That's right, Forrest. What you want, bitch? Yes. What you want? You wanna go? You wanna anyway, fight? I think that about wraps up the interview with Teddy. <coughs> so <coughs> Marie? Where? Peggy? Oh Peggy! Teddy? You gotta help me. I quiet. You'll talk more later. You only have to talk to someone who mattered more than you ever did. Peggy. Sister? Peggy, wh what's happening? Why are you even there? What did I explain, Peggy? Earlier, while you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. Do you remember? Well, it was from Dawn. She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. And that I should come to the gym for a reunion. And when you walked in, you found out. My sister is the Whistling Man. Good to see you too. So is your nephew. Why didn't you tell me any of this? She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me or come with me when we need you on the radio. And I just... I'm sorry. This has to be a lot for you. I just... Next best thing. Do you mean someone has to pay for what they did? Murray, please. Mom and Dad are gone, Peggy. Son, wow. You forgot me. Just like the rest. No, she didn't. She's holding your card right here. God. I'm holding your. Marie, Peggy never forgot about you. Keep your mouth shut. She kept a card from you. She, she kept it here on her desk. What card? The card you made me for my eighth birthday. Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love, M. I. Well, I. Henry, the police! Three! No! Henry, get out of there! Damn, he's done. He's done. He's, he's, he's done.
so's Peggy. She's been cut pretty bad, but we're here Oh, now. damn, she got cut? I'll be okay. God, Marie. Hey, Sara. I need you to look after Peggy. She needs help. Now, we got here just in the nick of time. Where's Marie? She bolted right as we got here. The police are right on her heels. It won't be long now. It's over, Forrest. Hell yeah. Folks, it was a long night, but we made it through together. I'm gonna head off and check on Peggy. This has been Forrest Nash. Good night and good morning. Good night and good morning. I should have said it's been a scream. Ah, well. Is that the end of the game? The man, the myth, the scream? Hey, I'm su I survived. Ah, uh, Cynthia died. Oh, wait, there was an epilogue. Wait, what was the epilogue? I'm going to end this stream here, but, so, uh, yeah, W stream, make sure to go check out my socials and my YouTube, where I'll be posting the, I might replay this game and get, where I save everyone and get the proper epilogue, but until then, um, stay safe.